uh, uh, fill out the tables, and we've asked Ed to take a crack at it uh, just to give us a starting point in preparation. And the, the group here as a whole will weigh in on it, I'm sure. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm just dealing with a logistical issue, Norm, which is we got it printed for the committee to be able to look at, but we didn't get it um, into a chart so that we can project it. So I'm just. Oh, I see. Um, so you're doing graphics. Just going to transfer it over to the, to the driver. There we go. Well done. We should announce that we have smelling salts in the back for anybody that uh, needs them after Sally's presentation. <laughs> and also, I, I thought it was kind of amusing that uh, Jeff thought that that one commercial booster slide was the only controversial slide <laughs> in Sally's chart. I thought that was kind of cute. That's, that's because Jeff was part of the process, so <laughs> he was I, well I think worn down. That one has drawn more than its fair share of revisits in the, uh, no. in the discussion. Well deserved. Um, okay, Mr. Chairman, thank you for this opportunity to discuss this easy topic at the end of the day. So uh, the process that we have engaged in uh, outside of the FACA meeting uh, is, well, actually at the last meeting, uh, we presented oh the uh, evaluation system, actually in Cocoa Beach, right, Wanda? We, we presented the evaluation system and recommended for its approval to the, um, to the group, which was agreed. And then today we uh, further defined the, the criteria uh, that went with it. And these, by the way, are linked back through uh, backup documents uh, to the um, uh, evaluation criteria that are contained in the OSTP uh, statement of task, which I'll make reference to occasionally uh, in this discussion as well as, uh, as one mentioned earlier today, uh, to uh, other historic and important uh, policy documents, the Space Act, the Vision for Space Exploration, and so forth. So there are actually, in many of these cases, more words than, uh, that are in the backup documents than, than uh, have been presented in the public meeting. Uh, but they were agreed by inclusion by the committee. Um, so, oh, there it is, okay. So this, the, uh, the what can only be considered an eye chart and probably not even visible to the people in the front row. Uh, <laughs> so everybody move up to the front row. <laughs> yes. We can maybe get some printouts. You, uh, usually, uh, usually people drift to the back of the room in my classes anyway, so uh, that's our, I'm used to it back there. Um, the, uh, uh, so what we've done is we've taken the about dozen uh, options which basically were uh, left on the table norm uh, after Sally's, uh, after the analysis which Sally briefed. And in some cases this has expanded since the list we showed last week. So for example, there's a shuttle derived deep space one in the list now. Uh, and in some cases it's contracted based on sort of the, the, the relatively obvious things that were, were falling on the floor, for example, the dash out of LEO, as Sally proposed, uh, just didn't, didn't come anywhere close to its intent, was to, which was to try and find a way to get out of LEO as fast as possible, and in fact didn't produce a, 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 a step out of LEO until the end of the budget window in the constrained situation. So uh, with, the, with the permission of the, of the group, what we've done is we've added a few here and there and we've subtracted a few here and there to produce this, uh, this uh, set for the final uh, discussion. So what I'll do is I'll just read down it for those of you who can't read it. Um, the, and and on, if we had two projectors, at this point we would project the last chart of the morning, but of course right. we don't have two projectors, so <laughs> I'll try and make the connections. The, uh, the first one is the, is the program of record uh, adjusted for risk, as are all the ones, uh, all the analysis done by aerospace unconstrained by the budget. That's what we call, that's the, our best estimate of what the program would have executed had they been given the budget. The second one is the program of record adjusted to risk constrained. And the third one, which is called on our, the sheet that we have in front of us, two dollar sign, 
is the program of record risk adjusted with the, uh, the plussed up budget trend that Sally discussed. So in fact, there's three versions of the program of record, unconstrained, constrained within the president's budget, and constrained within this curve that we've sketched in as what might be a reasonable increase over the proposed budget. Um, the next one is uh, 3B, which is ISS-focused commercial crew, because as Sally pointed out, the ISS-focused Aries 1 option just didn't make any sense, because in the uh, close the ISS in 15, the Aries becomes available in about 16, and in the close the ISS in 20, the Aries 1 becomes available in about 19, just in enough time to see the end of the space station. So there, there, there is no budget uh, uh, scenario in which trying to build the ISS in order to make it to the space station makes sense uh, if you have to pay for the space station to keep it alive out of the same budget. Is that a fair statement, Sally? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So what we've done is we've, we've uh, taken out the variant of ISS focused with Ares 1 and left in the ISS focused with commercial crew, which does show uh, on uh, Sally's chart of an hour or two ago, the commercial crew access to the ISS by 16 or so, sometime in, in the middle of the decade. Now, the, the, uh, this is color-coded to this last chart, which the committee has, by the way, from, from earlier this afternoon. The light blue on this re references back to the light blue on the, the, the chart 28 of my earlier presentation. The yellow references back to chart 29 of the previous presentation. And the green references back to chart 30 of the previous presentation, uh, which were the families that I described. So if we look at the yellow one, these are basically all the variants of deep space, uh, not all of which Sally had the opportunity to present, but which are in, uh, in consideration, which are basically the deep space with the Aries 5 light, that, which is the sixes, the deep space with the commercial hydrocarbon booster, which are the sevens, and the deep space with the shuttle derived vehicle, which we call 7S. It's up now, Bo. Oh, or Ed. okay. Or better. Um, and then in each of those, there's an unconstrained budget and a plus up budget, indicated by the little extra dollar sign after the number. And then finally, there are the last three in the green family, which is the alternate uh, Mars forward exploration of the moon or the uh, Mars first ones. Eight was the lunar global with Aries 5 light. Nine was lunar global with the commercial hydrocarbon. And 10 was Mars first with the unconstrained budget. And uh, which one of these would be the one that would go above the $3 billion that Sally described that might go to 4 billion or 5 billion or something like that? Well, we haven't done yet that sort of second order sensitivity norm. We, we've, we've got for most of them. Should we add them, one to do that? I, I hate to be adding, but um, either replace with one of these or add it. Sounds like it's uh, an ad. I, I, I would interpret the plus up ones as still having some Latitude, latitude to work on them. Right. That's as, fine. As to how much so we're going to plus it up. The three billion it's dollars. not exactly the number. Would you agree with that, Sally? Absolutely. You know, we, we uh, picked that number, uh, you know, late Saturday night sometime, I think. And uh, so this uh, falls in the category of just an updating the basic uh, options that you define. Right. Rather than defining a new new option. Fine. And, and one of the things we did want to go back, uh, and I think we've almost done now is to compare that with some of the earlier budgets just to see um, early budget uh, guidances just to see how it compared. So I would interpret these uh, plus up ones as um, still have some margin to um, what 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 Norm is referring to is um, there are some of these where we have a sense that if we move the, the, the budget request up just a bit more it would have a significant influence on accelerating uh, key milestones in the future. And that before we make the final recommendation to the White House, we might want to do that sensitivity analysis. You know, if we can buy a year or two 
for a, a modest increase in the earlier years, that's probably a trade worth making. Does that answer your question, Norm? Yeah, thank you. Now, what you might be able to see if you read across are the now um, 13 evaluation criteria which Wanda just went through. Uh, and I'll read from right, uh, from left to right for those who can't read, exploration, preparation, technology, innovation, science, knowledge, human civilization, economic expansion, public engagement, and global partners, which are the seven areas of, of uh, defined benefit. Then there's sustainability, safety, and mission success, NASA industry workforce, and national skills, which are the, call them programmatic considerations. And then I've left blank the program, uh, the schedule and program risk and the life cycle cost, because that information is really derived from the aerospace costing analysis rather than an independent uh, uh, pass through the problem. I mean, there's no sense filling that in without having all of the, it's a way to report in this format what the cost and schedule information from the aerospace analysis would show. So uh, I, I suggest, Norm, that we just defer those two until we're able to see the details of the analysis and focus on the remaining um, 11 of them, which is not a small number. Ed, I, I want another option like I want a hole in the head, but what happened to Scenario 5? Um, scenario 5, that was the, yeah. that was the shuttle extension. The shuttle extension. Um, <coughs> It was one of the ones with the red line through it that... Okay, well, I... I <laughs> it should be here. Yeah, it, I think... I, I mean, oh, I, no, I'm, okay. all, I'm actually not in favor of this option. I'm just trying to no, give it okay. fair due. I, I was yeah. under the impression that it was another one that when the analysis was done, that the shuttle extension cost caused the availability of the shuttle derived vehicle to move enough to the left that you, that you were recommending not continuing it. But... No, if I, I misunderstood, I'll be happy to add it back in. Um, actually, we haven't gotten the uh, constrained, but or the the partially constrained, less constrained, plus up, whatever we want to call it, budget uh, for that one that one yet. And um, you know, I, I think that there were uh, some mitigating circumstances that that we wanted to take a look at. Okay. Uh, we we pushed it down on the priority. Okay. Stack to to get uh, some of the other runs out, but uh, I don't think we've we've fully uh, uh, okay. come for full circle on that one yet. Okay, so we'll put it back in between three and six, um, which raises the question of what was four. Yeah, it does. What was four? Four was dash oh, out of Leo. Out of we discussed that one. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. What was four? Dash out of Leo. Oh. And three A was um, the ISS focused with the uh, Ares five crew. Aries, I'm sorry, Aries 1 delivery. Thank you. I think one thing Ed, about this is that although we've got a ton of options, which I didn't want to do, a lot of them can be dismissed almost immediately. So I think we show them because there are people who are interested in them, right. but not because they're worthy of a great deal of right. thought. M maybe we should <laughs> go through that exercise yeah. so we don't spend our right. time and energy scoring yeah. options so that we can delete them. Right. Let, let me just uh, say one more sentence because in a FACA process, uh, it's important to explain how this, this document in front of you was derived, and then I think we should have that discussion, Norm, which is that a subgroup of the overall committee uh, deliberated, um, many of them being as uh, domain experts on various columns. So that, for example, we work with uh, Wanda on the safety and uh, mission success with Leroy on uh, uh, human civilization and uh, global partnerships and safety, with um, Chris on science, with Jeff on exploration preparation and technology innovation. So this is uh, a, a summing together of the individual contributions with a little adjusting by me in order to present a proposal to the group here that, for deliberation in public. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Norm, may I ask you a question, sir? Oh, uh, Okay. Can I just add one more thing? Is that uh, as, as a ground rule, what I'd like to suggest is that in this sort of subjective evaluation, there's pretty good social science research 
that indicates that if you give people a five-point scale to rate on that's even with attached to rubrics like the ones Wanda produced, a difference of one increment is essentially agreement. In other words, Leroy can, I could argue all day whether a given number is, should be minus one or minus two. The, the real disagreements occur if I think it should be minus one and he thinks it should be plus one. So what I would do as we're, we're reviewing this is look for places where you think the grading is off by more, more than one increment as the places that are really important to discuss. I'm sorry, Bob. The question I was going to ask, uh, uh, Norm, would you like us to dialogue this or do we, each one of us, change the numbers and somebody treats it as a voting? No, I, I think I would rather dialogue it. And uh, I think as Ed goes through, we'll just pick those areas where we have a two-point difference or something profound. And uh, with the understanding that as we get new data, we're still collecting data, obviously. Yeah. Uh, it may change these, but it'll be based on fact. Well, because, for example, I was looking at why is technology innovation tool for hydrocarbon booster? Because uh, those options have propellant transfer integral to them. And so, so we, we pull that capability in. Not, uh, well, and, and it, would, it would stimulate uh, an order of $2 billion investment in the development of a new large hydrocarbon engine which is currently not differentially costed. But, so is, but there's no propulsion, high, uh, kerosene and lax propulsion, is it? Because we are either buying Russian engines or, or doing what Russians have done for decades, and I would hardly call that innovation. Yeah, in my opinion, it's not the, it's not the hydrocarbon propulsion, it's the reliance on propellant transfer oh, that's the big transfer. swinger. Well, I, I, then I can live with it. Okay, thank you. You know, I wonder if we shouldn't go through these in sequence. Right. Uh, and talk about them, and I would do it by column. Okay. So we'll start with the first one. The, the rough I, rash. Ed, can I go back to Norm's, Norm's question about, or oh. maybe it was your question. Should about, we take some rows off? Yeah, mm -hmm. should we take yeah. some rows yeah. off? Yeah. yeah. Like the unconstrained rows. Right. I mean, are we <laughs> really considering PLR. unconstrained? That, that's, that's a good question. Um, I, I, I don't know the answer to that question. Maybe Norm does. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he does. I didn't there show any of the law for this budgets, one? but uh, um, I have another cut that we might be able to make more easily, which is I'd like to suggest, given everything we've heard and everything we've learned, that however painful the budgetary implications may be, we just face up to the fact that ISS is not going to splash in 2016. And we just admit it, and we just take the options that, the, that rely on ISS splashing in 2016 off the table. I can agree with that. May I add? I mean, you're... I'm, I'm just uh, flipping through my notes. To okay. <laughs> uh, other than program of record, which we Well, have actually, to for... I think the implication show... of that would be that program of record would become only there for purposes of comparison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should we show one option that... Uh, does not continue ISS, so it shows the impact of not continuing it. <clears throat> well, actually, uh, as of now, having taken Dash out of LEO off for reasons that it didn't achieve its purposes, the only option that, uh, that ends the ISS in 2015 is, is, the, is the program of record. And I think one of the agreements we had, or one of the thoughts we had, is that we, w we would show the program of record if it, at least for a reference case, uh, but we could go either way on that. Or we could just change the, 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 the ISS date in the program of record to 2020. Well, actually, I was going to propose that possibility, that uh, we've been dealing with the program of record as a baseline, you know, a, a comparison case. Um, I'm wondering whether, almost for completeness, um, we should consider one that is the program of record with the ISS and with the technology line included. Um, you know, th we've got the, uh, the program of record does not include the robust technology line. I'm sure none of us would think that that would be the right way to continue forward even if uh, we went forward with the program of record. And it doesn't include the ISS extension. And 
I think if, if we want to keep one without, uh, with, you know, that splashes the ISS, then, you know, we sort of have one in our baseline program of record. Uh, but I'd, I'd actually be in favor of, uh, uh, of not, keeping a, um, not keeping an option that deorbits the ISS just for the sake of having an option that deorbits the ISS. Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm doing a flip-flop here. I've, I've been the one all along that's been arguing for fewer options, but uh, uh, there is a substantial body of people that believe you ought to shut ISS down and uh, get on with life, uh, spend, spend your money on new systems. The, most everybody I talk to from the science community feels that way. And if we don't even have that option in here, uh, it's going to raise a lot of questions. Also, I think, uh, although all of us agree, you should add the, uh, the technology program. The fact of life is that it's not in the current program of reference, so it's really not a program of reference if we add it to it. No, it's yeah, I, I don't know. It's a tough call, but I, my leaning would be to uh, keep a pure program of reference and live with more options. My suggestion, actually, is we leave the program of record options in but we state fairly clearly they are there for reference. Yeah. And all of our going forward suggestions are below that triple line. Well, I had thought of that too. You don't even count those. Uh, yeah, those are, we're saying that they're not doable, they're uh, for reference. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, but then I, I guess that, that I'd ask whether, you know, by the end of the day, are we, are we going to try to uh, reduce this number of scenarios some through whatever deliberations and wisdom we want to want to apply um, or are we are we planning to come out of today with you know sort of a, a broad set of scenarios that um, that uh, uh, that we intend to to carry forward um, you know the, the question is at, at some level whether we think we need you know we're at the stage where we can uh, you know, talk about whether we think we need to have an option that deorbits the ISS in the options that we take forward to the decision makers. Um, well, let me um, let me comment, Norm, that another because it's a coupled idea. Uh, another desire that we have is to show at least two options that are actually in guidance. That are actually what? That are, are that are within the budget guidance. We've got to do that. And um, almost certainly one of those could be the program of record, yeah. splashing the ISS and <clears throat> and executing the program as rapidly as it would fit within the budget, which I think is a that's good, another important point. Right. So, so two, the, two and three B are the only ones we have right now that fall into that category. Right. Two and um, yes, that's right. Two, two and three B. Meet two and three B. We, we we were carrying three. You'll recall that we thought would look uh, not as bad as others within the budget constraint, and one of them, which which was the dash out of Leo, really didn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So the the two that we have that are likely within budget, or can be made to be within budget, are the program of record without the ISS extension and the ISS focused, which has the ISS extension. So it sort of represents the two cases of, you know, how fast you can do anything within the budget, turning off the ISS or leaving the ISS on for another five years. Well, we, we so have, that would argue we should keep two and three B to satisfy the uh, commitment we've made to the White House to present options within budget guidance. Well, I'm, I'm not again. I'm not in favor of fewer options, just for the sake of fewer options. But you know, even I have been living with this for a long time. Feel like we we've, we've got too many things on the Chinese menu. What about taking off Lunar Global? The, certainly, the unconstrained versions of Lunar Global. It, yeah. it, it, it looks a lot like program of record. And it's just not obvious that from a national policy. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. We cannot design, you know, right down to the manifest and the and the system design of what all the pieces are, anything. I could know. get with that. <laughs> and, yeah. and so we're, we're talking about giving broad brush guidance, and it's not, yeah. it, it, it's pretty obvious that in a world of constrained budgets, even though we may do a lunar lander, it's, it's not going to be Altair. Uh, you know, it, it, the bunny's not there. Yeah. 
Uh, well, well along those lines, I mean, what about all the unconstrained budget, like the ones in right. the yellow? I, mean, I, yeah, I heard that suggestion earlier, yeah. and I think that, I, you know, I thought we had consensus that taking something forward that is unconstrained and, you know, doesn't factor in the realities of the, the you know, the budget limitations right. yeah. would not be well received. So. We, we can leave the program of record unconstrained just for reference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, but then delete all the other yeah, unconstrained. Delete all the other unconstrained. And then we might have a second order discussion. Some some of these, I th I think, I mean, Norm already said some of these might want to be constrained to a little bit higher number. Well, but and I think there's one that we might want to look at constrained to a little bit lower number. But that's a, yeah. a nuance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that is I think a nuance for our purpose. Uh, if you get rid of lunar. I would have no problem getting rid of Lunar Global, given what we now know. Is there anybody who would argue for keeping Lunar Global? Well, I, I'm, I'm just being, one of the things that is making the appearance of it being desirable to get rid of Lunar Global is that the only two cases we've actually run are both uh -huh. are the unconstrained ones. So if you just sort of read down the list and say, let's get rid of the unconstrained ones, that ends up Xing out both of the Lunar Globals. So what I'm doing, Norm, is I'm just running my eye along the line eight and the line one, which uh, if it were true that these were the same program would have about the same scores, and there's a few places where they're different, and I'm trying to reconstruct in real time why, but you see there's a, there are other things like in eight, in fact, the ISS continues, whereas in the, the POR it doesn't, <coughs> right? And in eight, there's the technology wedge which in one there isn't. So in fact, if you, if you read, I think that the way we've done the bookkeeping, eight is uh, not, that, not that I'm fighting taking get rid of Luna Global, but eight is actually a better proxy for what we think the, the program of record would look like if we put the ISS extension in and we put the technology wedge in, if you follow that. It's even worse yeah, though. It's, it's even worse than the program um, of record, though. Well, it's even worse in what sense? Yeah, it pushes everything further out. Well, we, we don't know that yet. The, the, we, the, the, there is a, there's a lot of, there's a big question mark on some of the, one of the cost yeah. numbers that's a big driver on that chart. Right. Yeah. But what, what I do think versus program of record is not so obvious. But when you compare Lunar Global to Deep Space, it is obvious. Yeah, that's right. You know, yep. the, the no, I, I, I would take the, you know, uh, correcting for this uh, change of the ISS and the, um, the technology line, I would take the friendly amendment on that, that Jeff has proposed. That, that I think that the creation of Lunar Global was a, an attempt to see if sort of a different strategy for exploring the moon would produce significantly different value or significantly different cost. And I think that the first approximation, it didn't. Yeah. So that it, the sort of, uh, I wish it was down as low as 30,000 feet, 100,000 foot view that the White House will take of this, those would probably be viewed in the same. More subtlety. As, as subtlety, as, as minor variants. And, and now that we've enhanced deep space right. with, with the off-ramp for lunar presence, right. it really becomes a manifesting nuance that NASA will spend a man century on for every year that we've thought about this, right. um, uh, figuring out exactly which order of de going to exactly which of these destinations That's is right. actually optimal. And, and in fact, to be completely fair and open, the the the, the actual program of record, the, the guys in Houston who think about this every day still have, you know, variants that are not dissimilar from deep space within the trade space they're working on knowing that it's you know five years away from making that decision so we, we I, I i agree with jeff i think that we, we, going, would not, going we, would, we would not lose anything by taking those off well if we do that and we took off unconstrained options mm -hmm. with a caveat i'm about to come to we'd have a reasonable set yeah well um, uh, before we do the bookkeeping Let's talk about option 10. That's the, that's the, that's the one, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ride, you want to talk to us about option 10? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I think that, uh, you know, from the perspective that we've had just in the last four days where we've been focused on um, the numbers and uh, uh, trying to see whether these fit under 
any reasonable budget assumption over the next the next few years. Um, we have not done the runs yet, so we don't know how bad this is. But just knowing the elements that build it up and the numbers that go into the elements that that build it up, um, it's pretty clear that it's going to be. Um, worse in a budget sense, probably considerably worse than any of the budgets that we've that we've looked at. I think uh, just a, a rough order of magnitude that uh, that uh, some of the uh, NASA folks have been carrying around uh, in their heads is that it's about a factor of two more than the program of record. And um, you know, for our purposes today, that's not a horrible number to be to be using. So I think the decision that we have to make on, on this particular one is whether we want to uh, uh, consider it on the merits of the option independent of how much it costs um, or whether we want to, to, to say right now it is, you know, it's just quite a ways outside. I mean, it's way outside the budget guidance that we've been, been given. Um, so we could... Uh, we could take it off the table. And I'm, I, I actually don't have a, um, I'm not sure I have an opinion on that. My, on that know, yet. Sally, I, I almost hate to get rid of it at this stage. My leaning would be to carry items that have merit. And if the decision maker will go to the life cycle cost column first and go down to it and cross out the big ones <laughs> and immediately focus on the ones that are left. So I don't think they're gonna wind up with 10 items to consider. No, well, I'd like to discuss the merit of that option. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, I have dreamed of going to Mars my whole life. And I think the most destructive thing that we could do as a nation that would, that would put the chance of actually extending human civilization to Mars off for a generation, if not forever, would be to do a headlong rush to Mars right now. And the reason for that is, you know, look, look at where we are now with the moon. You know, smart people who followed this program their entire lives are saying we can never do anything to make it affordable to go to the moon. Because we know how that's going to be done, and it's very expensive. Now, I don't agree with that, but that's the result. That's what happens when you, when you go a bridge too far and you, and you say, never mind what it costs, you know, let's just do it. And if we if we go to Mars uh, in a hurry, with the technology that we have today, with the architectures that we have today, with the lack of time and investment to develop the in-space infrastructure that we would need to do this in an affordable way, it's literally two billion dollars per footprint. Never mind the development cost, the recurring cost. You know, and I simply can't believe that for a generation we're going to sustain that and then when we get there not say great, mission accomplished, there's always the next election, you know, let's stop. And that would be a disaster. So I, I don't think that the option of going the, there this way, I'm, I'm, I want to go to Mars but not this way. I want to go to Mars the right way, which is let's invest in the buildup of infrastructure Let's invest in the buildup of transportation. Let's invest in the buildup of technology so that we have some idea how we actually want to do it. Let me play. Oh, go ahead, Chris. Then I'd like to play okay. the devil's advocate. Thank you. I, uh, I, I, I'm comfortable with where we're coming out, but I want to make a kind of brief summary statement to uh, actually test whether I'm comfortable with it. <laughs> what we're about to do uh, as we're going down this, this direction is to say to the White House that Okay, you've got the program of record scenarios for reference. Those involve a robust lunar program, but you know they all look absurd. They're either way outside the budget guidance, or you don't actually do anything uh, within the within the time scales we're looking at. Um, lunar Global and Mars, uh, they either look like the program of record, or Mars is impossible within you know twice the budget of the program of record. So basically, all the options we're going to present to the White House are deep space options. Now, admittedly, they have off-ramps for lunar surface exploration. Uh, but basically, he, he your option, here are your options. They're deep space options. Oh, and by the way, we've taken Aries 1 off the table. 
does. I just want to make it clear that we're, you I, know, in terms of presenting options to the White House, we're pre in sure some right. sense we're presenting a fairly limited suite of options to them. I, I, I don't think that's that's factually quite correct, Chris. Great, Sorry. correct so, me. Uh, I, I think that what we agreed, at least in my notes, Norm, is that when we decided to take the program of record unconstrained and the program of record risk adjusted to two dollar sign off, we agreed that we would replace it with the program of record with the technology program and the extension of the ISS. So that, that we've, we've essentially okay. used that to carry the, um, the lunar program and there's still the one that we penciled back in, number five, which is basically the shuttle derived way of doing that same program. So there's actually two programs that lead to something like the current lunar exploration strategy, which differ primarily in launch vehicle. And there are three variants that are something like uh, the, the flexible, which differ primarily in exploration. And one of those categories <coughs> one, the, the program of record plus the ISS extension. No, that was a commercial crew, wasn't it? Okay. I just um, want to understand that where we, we stand. That there. was left, uh, that was um, ambiguous in our discussion, whether uh, in, in that putting, you know, modifying the program of record to put in the technology wedge and extend the ISS, we left the Aries one in or we took it out. Um, right, the yeah. sensitivity analysis would say that would not be a good trade. It would say that. It would say commercial tr crew would be a better um, a better trade for that. So, so then why don't we discuss, I had, I had kind of missed that, uh, that we were keeping that program of record but with ISS extended and technology line in. Yeah, I so, think that was just, a, I, I don't know that we had actually adopted that. We were yeah, that was a discussion. That. Oh, right. okay. Well, okay. If, I was taking we, notes on the discussion, so I wrote good. it down. If we wished, based on what we learned, to sort of to to look at what would be reasonable with more money for something looking like the program of record i think based on what we learned it looks like 3b with more money yes yeah that's right well, that's right. That's if right. You as you start changing these, you know, one yeah. starts looking like yeah. the other. Well, because, yeah, you know, you're exactly right. It's a 3B. It does uh, tack on to something close to the, the program of record. Did, so. did 3B have the uh, robust technology program? It yes. does. Yes. It's yeah. got the robust technology. Yeah. It's, it's got commercial crew because we did that trade and the commercial, commercial crew won out. Um, and we actually looked at the less constrained version of this and it act, it did get you back to uh, human lunar return um, sometime in the late 2020s I don't remember so if 20, we wanted to add an option that's more POR like but still makes sense a 3b plus might make might be that option yeah and in fact it, it ends up having the same parameters as the one I jotted down yes because they would be both based on the the program of record they would both include the ISS they would both include the technology program, and they would both include commercial crew. Right. So we just arrived at it from two different angles. Yeah. Okay. Hey, so it, what we would, the, the easiest thing for the purposes of annotation is just to, is to add a 3B dollar sign to the sheet, which is the 3B allowed to go mm -hmm. to the yeah. above guidance level. See, I saw Bo, and then Leroy, and then myself. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Ed, uh, I'm looking at, at the scenarios and uh, uh, the deep space, they only have Mars flyby, right? All of them. That's what's been budgeted into them. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Because there's a significant so, technology investment so, and budget to get to the next they step. they could all lead to Mars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They lead to Mars. They That's lead right. to Mars. They just don't do it during the period of time during we looked at. During the period of time. Uh, okay. So, uh, I think we should not recommend that Americans don't plan to go to Mars. This would be like, uh, you know, I feel like we were capitulating. I know we have money is big and, and times are tough. You know, I know all of that. But you know, things may change or they will change. 
conditional probability, right? There is something that says, if things are real rotten right now, they won't stay that way. <laughs> if things are real good, they won't stay that way either. So I think it's absolutely important that this, in my opinion, that this panel does recommend that we, the Americans, go to, to Mars. And whether it's, and I, you know, Jeff, you and I very infrequently fail to see eye to eye, but in this case, I do. You've got to work on a technology so we can have a more reasonable way to get to Mars. But by God, we ought to plan to get to Mars, you know. We would sort of like fail to, uh, to we, we would recognize that we are, somebody said, we, we would recognize that we, that we are less than we used to be, you know. And I don't think that we should do that. So I, I think we ought to have go to Mars one way or another. You know, Leroy? The, the, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Leroy? <laughs> I just wanted to say, uh, uh, first of all, I love Mars, too. I love the moon. When I was uh, selected by NASA to be an astronaut in 1990, uh, it was looking actually like I might have a shot at going to Mars, and I certainly thought at a minimum I'd have a pretty good shot at going to the moon. I never dreamed that 19 years later I'd be on an Augustine commission. But I agree with I I, I want to go to Mars, but I agree with Jeff. It's uh, if we go to Mars, it should be done the right way. But I also agree with Bo. It's not something we should give up on. Mm -mm. So I think we should carry this because I think it's important that we do uh, keep that keep that goal. But I also think it's important to, to put the cost down what we really think it would be to do it right and present that, um, if not as an option, then as a point of reference, just like the program of record uh, with the unconstrained budget. You know, let, let the uh, decision makers know what it really would cost. So, so I, think, I think it's important it? to keep oh, I'm sorry. I, no, I'm sorry. I was just saying, I, was, I think it's important to keep that option. So did you want to say no, no, um, I actually in. think that's a good point. And uh, going, taking it through the, um, the budgeting exercise so that we've got a cost on what we think is the program, I think, I think would, be, would be valuable, knowing that it's not you know, the best uh, costing of a, a trip to Mars, but at least it uh, puts a reference out there for okay. us. Uh, what I was going to say was that it, you know, it seems to me that um, you know, I'm not nearly as uh, deeply involved in the, um, the deep space scenario as the Beyond Leo group has been. Um, you know, but it strikes me that, that uh, um, you know, that does not take Mars off the table. That doesn't leave out the possibility of an off-ramp to Mars once the technology has sure. been developed. And in mm -hmm. fact, it actually develops, you know, it's got the technology line, but it also helps develop some of the in-space infrastructure right. that actually have a shot at making it much more, uh, much more reasonable, much more feasible. My more turn. I, I have. Or, My turn. But, okay. You uh, want to go or I'll go over here? Your call. <laughs> I'll call it Norm. The, uh, <laughs> much of what I wanted to say has been said, but I'd like to, at the risk of uh, football getting a penalty for piling on, I'd like to do that. The uh, uh, the idea of having a uh, Mars program that's done properly, we shouldn't do it if we can't do it properly, clearly. So whatever we define should be, quote, unquote, properly carried out. Uh, so why not show it and let the numbers speak for themselves? And if the numbers speak for themselves and show it comes in very late, that's fine. So be it. Uh, to Sally's point, uh, the point I've been making, I think we have some wordsmithing to do to make clear that these medium op, this middle set of options do include Mars. They're just not in the time frame that we've talked about. We've tended to jump gloss over that. And then lastly, uh, there's a, a substantial body of, of people who, who would like to see their option at least looked at who take the point of view that uh, why would you want to go back to the moon? We did that 40 years ago. Uh, we've been there. Uh, there's a point of view of that group of people would say, uh, you know, why would you go to L1? Are you going to mine uh, fuel at L1? Or what are you going to do at L1? Uh, would you, why would you want to uh, uh, land on an asteroid for a brief time, kind of like a butterfly landing on a flower. I mean, what's interesting about that? The only really interesting thing is Mars. So it ought to be an option and let the facts fall where they may. So 
that's, that would be my argument. Now, let's see, who else did I see? Okay, you're going to rebut that. No, I, 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 not really. <laughs> and I have Here, we're, in, we're, in a, we're in a dilemma that's as much driven by, by our running out of time as anything else. So I'm going to see if I can suggest a way out of it. The basic problem is it's possible to lay out a vision for how, with the insertion of advanced technology and the insertion of space infrastructure, how you'd get to Mars. And we have a feeling, and that's as far as I'll take it, that, that the beginning steps of that wind up looking not too dissimilar from what we're calling deep space. Um, but it is absolutely not within our capability as a committee in the time available to attempt to produce a cost and a budget and a schedule for that. We could take on, you know, writing a well-informed piece of science fiction, you know, saying, you know, this is what the future might look like and this is why we're investing in technology and this is how you develop from these kinds of capabilities to a real Mars mission. We could probably do that, but I guarantee we're not gonna have time to do that and then do manifests and then do budgets and then do schedules. We just can't do it. Because part of the problem of, de of, of depending on advanced technologies and new infrastructure is you aren't completely sure what the world's gonna look like after you have them. So let's see, you're suggesting Basically, you take 10 off and deal with it as a discussion item. I'm not committed emotionally to whether 10 is on or off. I feel we're doing a disservice to our finding that we made as a committee that, we, that human civilization getting to Mars is why we do this. I feel we're doing a huge disservice to that by holding up, you know, the, the, the current design reference architecture based on minimal investment of technology and saying that's how you'd get to Mars, now we've put a budget number on it, now it's obviously unaffordable so we shouldn't do it. I, I don't think that's the posture we're trying to get in. I think the posture we're trying to get in is we think it's possible to get to Mars, we, we think that we're laying out what the first couple of steps on that road are, we know we don't know what steps four through 10 are, although we might have some ideas. Maybe instead of laying up this straw man just to let the, the, the budget office knock it over, maybe we would be better served by saying qualitatively, here's the steps that come after. Norm, if I, um, I can, I, I, I tend to agree with Jeff. Because I think if you, if you costed with the, the, the current approach uh, and the current technology, you, you would leave an impression that this was an unattainable thing, much as it was left in 1991. And uh, I, I actually think that what we should do is we should frame both of the principal options we have left, which are basically some version of deep space and some version of lunar exploration, in, with, this, with the strong flavor and the strong recommendation that they actually be treated as preparatory steps to going to Mars. Yeah, see, that's been the point I've been after all along, is that we don't say that. They're, they don't even have that in the okay. title. Well, then, <clears throat> then here's a, here's a concrete proposal. We can't cost it, so we can't score it, because it's not a different scenario. Let's take the action item to write out a exemplary scenario of what the, what the steps from here to Mars, given the technology investment, might look like. And then, so 10 would not be quantitatively evaluated. It would be this carefully written piece. Uh, me, but I could we, live with that. It's not uh, an option. It's a discussion about how you get from the options above to Mars. Yeah, no, I could live with that yes, only if you make very clear yeah. that on option yeah. six and seven that they aim at Mars, that they do aim at Mars. And it's the problem with them now is it sounds like they fly by Mars and call it a day. Norm, this, just one point of clarification. I think the issue I have with option 10 is that we don't think that the approach of Mars direct 
is the right way to be successful in getting to Mars. That's I true think, too. I think what we, I thought what we were saying was that uh, the deep space options do lay the, the, the first steps to how would you smartly plan to go to Mars. What we failed to do is highlight that you know yeah. our expectation is that you would in fact execute those options with, with a goal of getting to Mars. But that, so, you know what you would get in the in the budget uh, is the flyby. But and, and it, all the other steps that you would take, the technology, um, you know, all the other planning that you would do would be with an eye toward getting yourselves to a, a point of being able to land on Mars. Well, you know, if, if we make clear that deep space is a Mars ultimate option, right? I can get with that. I'm okay with that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I can get with that. If we had a whiteboard here or a flip chart, I'd draw a little sketch, so I'll draw it in the air, which is really a, a set of, 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 uh, of future steps. You know, the first step is either something like the lunar exploration strategy is proposed or something like deep space. And then and in some time, deep space actually has a branch back to lunar and they, in one or the other way, they're, they're aimed at going to Mars, but it's really for the, uh, the next Augustine report. You know, the, the, it's our responsibility to do the preparatory work and there are basically two opportunities here to lay out pathways to the preparatory work. Yeah, I, th I think it gets to be a, a nuance that uh, I would not be happy saying, here's a program for the next 15 years, and when that's done, we'll get on with going to Mars. I would be happier with a program that says, we're going to go to Mars, and here's the first 15 years of the way to get there. I think that's if well you framed. See the difference. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. If, you would, if you can accept that anything we say after that is going to depend on a lot of assumptions about how the technologies shake out, um, and that'll tie back into the technology section where it points out that we have multiple options for each one of these capabilities. We can tell a story like that. Yeah, I think we can too. Okay. Let me um, try and summarize where I think we are. That we have two options left on the table which we will work on to the point where they fit within the President's budget guidance, which are 2 and 3B. The, the program of record without the ISX extension, without the uh, technology wedge constrained by the 10 budget, and 3B, the ISS focused with commercial crew constrained to the 10 budget. So those are the two we'll carry forward in the anticipation that those will be the ones that meet guidance that will retain one and two dollar sign just as reference. That is to say that's basically the unconstrained POR and the constrained POR, the, the plussed up, the lightly constrained POR, which uh, is a very nice chart as Sally used today to show that if the budget had been about what the budget was expected to be, darn it all if five years later with all the sophisticated analysis and the knowledge we have, it's not far from the deadlines that they set. And I think that's a very important message to send in our report, but as a reference case. That we expand, uh, that we create a 3B that allows it to go up to the, uh, the plussed up budget, which is really the, the program of record allowed to drift back up in budget from the President's current guidance with the addition of commercial crew, the deletion of Ares 1, the ISS extension, and the technology program. And that 5 is actually a variant of that. 5 is that, that we had to pencil back in is really just the change out of the launch vehicle on that. Is 5 going to be unconstrained, or FY10 constrained, or loosely constrained? Loosely constrained. Loosely, okay, yeah. so it's kind of $5. $5. Five, five. It's really $5, right? Yeah. It's the, it's the plussed up budget. Got it. On five. And the, the other major variant is the, is the deep space family, which really only vary by the launch vehicle that's used, the, the new hydrocarbon vehicle, the shuttle-derived vehicle, or the Ares-derived vehicle. So in, in some senses, Norm, and that we show the, that we eliminate the global lunar as independent things, independent variants, and we put 
the Mars discussion into the, into the wrapper, that these are ways to get us towards Mars, rather than explicitly costing the current uh, technology design reference mission proposal to get to Mars. So in essence, you could, you could note that we've made sort of a sweeping simplification that there are only four, ver there are only four options left on the table. There's the two that are within guidance, and there's the two modes of exploration, going to the moon or, or flexible, and the real variation, the variance within those three, the, in those latter two, are, are the launch vehicles sh switching in and out, which I think we all understand are subject to further refinement of the analysis before we're willing to make a definitive statement about, about those. Well, did that sound like a reasonable? It's very reasonable. If, as long as you explain what it means, the Mars discussion, you mean identifying it as destination or just discussion? I hope you I meant have, destination. Destination, yes. Okay, because we don't want us to. I, I, I was just to trying us. to capture the spirit of shrinking what Jeff proposed. Shrinking vision, bunch of guys. No, right? no shrinking okay, vision here, Bob. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I will state it much more strongly. I think it's in, what, we're, what we just took on is the requirement to show qualitatively how you get from the end state of, these, of, of, of this option to, to, to human beings on Mars. Or at least that one scenario. Yeah. yeah. Some, yeah. Because as you said, we don't actually know how right. we're going to do that. We need to show that there is at least one way. <laughs> Existence theorem. Okay, so Norm, we've now made considerable progress uh, in the sense that we have um, started with about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 of these, actually 16 or 17 before we took a few off. <laughs> and we're now down to really a, about four families of, of options. The two, the two constrained ones and the two which we're going to allow to the, to the plussed up line. And those two families really differ primarily in the, in the launch to LEO vehicle, that we work as a variant within them. So you could actually say we're down to four options subject to more analysis of the launch vehicle. Plus a reference case. Plus, a, plus the reference case. So we have two, three B, five dollar sign, and basically everything that's in yellow because they're all versions of deep space. No, well, no, because we took the out, take out the unconstrained. Let me try and they give you a complete space. list. Okay. Well, how, 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 about, how about if we go from yes, sir. my list? We, number one has become a reference. Number two is in as one that will be within guidance. Number three, number two dollar sign has become a reference, the POR risk adjusted. Three B is in as one that will be within guidance. 3B dollar sign, which was created, is 3B allowed to rise up to the, um, to the loose guidance, the plus up. 5 is still in, which is really 5 dollar sign. It's the shuttle extension version of, of that, which uh, will be allowed to rise to the plus up. I'm sorry, a 3B dollar sign is in or out? 3B dollar sign is in. Okay. As is five dollar sign. As is five dollar sign. Gotcha. Those are, the dollar sign implies plus up budgets. Six deep space is gone because we're not keeping any unconstrained budget other than the reference case. Six dollar sign deep space plus up is still in. Seven is gone unconstrained because it's unconstrained. Seven dollar sign is in. Seven uh, S deep space and the SDV is gone because it's unconstrained and 7S dollar sign is still in. But those are all really the same option. All those in yellow that are left are the same option with three different launchers. Just as 3B dollar sign and 5B dollar sign are really the same program with two different launchers. And then keep going. And 8 is gone and 9 is gone because they've collapsed into the, um, the other lunar strategy, 3B dollar sign and 5B dollar sign. And 10 is become the, 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 the objective and the, the, the path on which we seek to place ourselves rather than an independent option. Well, 
Okay, while everyone's assessing that, let me make a couple quick announcements. We have handed out this paper to the members of the public to facilitate the discussion, uh, but I wanna just ca um, caveat that by saying this was a snapshot in time done by a subset of the committee. So this is not in any way a final output. So when, some, when people take this printout out from the meeting, this is not the way we ended up. Uh, secondly, we're holding the press event till after we're done, uh, which hopefully will be in about 30 minutes or so. And the presentations that we gave today, Ed's first one, Sally's, and Wanda's, as well as this chart, are on the website, not this chart yet, the other three are all on the website currently, as of now. If this chart goes on the website, it needs to be caveated right. pretty yeah, we strongly. Haven't, we haven't put that up yet. I was gonna wait yeah, for that. Yeah, be sure that gets caveated or we'll mislead the world. Right. Um, so you still need to now go back and uh, have the scoring discussion on those that those which survive? Yeah, that's the thing to do. Okay. Uh, and, uh, I, let's see, I just want to double check here. Seven uh, S dollar sign here, the last of the yellow ones. Seven S dollar sign? Yeah, that will be uh, with a plus up budget has a reasonable shot of being a viable program, if I'm not mistaken. Am I reading that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All, all three of them we think have a reasonable shot or we wouldn't leave them on the list. Yeah. Right, at the plus up level, where the plus up has some fuzz exactly. on it still. And you know, they're not gonna come in at exactly the same price, but. So those will be our options, and uh, the evaluation to some extent will be adjusted based on new facts. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, uh, if, okay, that's the end of that. Why don't we go ahead and discuss uh, well, okay. I would suggest you do it by column, just for the ones, as, as right. Jeff says, that <laughs> you're still on. Um, and, and Mr. Chairman, you have to give us some guidance here as to, are we ordering in dinner, or? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going strong, let's try that. We're going strong, okay. For so, one thing, if you've made the ground rule that uh, there are no more, you can't argue unless there's a difference at two, there are none of these that there are a difference at two. Yeah. Well, it's between your opinion and what, what, what these are. Oh, I see. <laughs> so, okay. so uh, just, just to, to, now you have to consult back to um, Wanda's charts, which are also in front of you. Right. So, you know, what, what constitutes a zero, one, two, minus one, and minus two, four? Let's start with exploration preparations, uh, which happens to be chart four in Wanda's charts. And I have in front of me, for reference, the OSTP statement of task guidance, which also helps clarify this. So for example, this one is, is clarified in the OSTP guidance as overall architecture capability, mission duration, um, mass delivered to LEO, uh, uh, and other selected destinations, flexibility, et cetera. So the, the, the scale was, was set up with the intent that line one would usually be a zero, which it is in this case. And then uh, the general tendency is that things that um, are in more highly constrained budgets lose numbers, and things that have, uh, uh, be careful, things that have less launch capability have lose numbers. That's the general trend in this column. Um, that doesn't seem to match Wanda's chart because some of this is also kind of about its ability to, to grow. Uh, it's not just about how much you throw, but right. where okay. it's going from there. Okay. So tell me what you differ by, do you, do you disagree with by it more than one? Okay. <laughs> um, I think that all of the yellow scenario, yellow dollar sign scenarios are a one, and you've got one of them scored as low as a minus one. And I think they all provide exploration beyond Leo with the ability to grow and evolve. Well, I actually had those those circled also. Okay. I don't under, yeah, don't the, quite understand. They should be particularly with the discussion we just had. They should be plus ones instead of minus ones. Both uh, of those. Well, um, there's a question. It, 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 before we put them all at plus one, 
there are substantial performance differences amongst these vehicles. So if you scored the ability to grow and expand robustly in the future, you, you would, I think, have, uh, have to take into consideration the fact that some vehicles are more capable than other vehicles. Well, but just ca that capable is one of those fuzzy words because, you know, it, it, in the long haul, which is what growth is all about, it's ultimately about dollars per kilogram. And, and you know, <clears throat> however much budget the nation's got, we can throw that many kilograms. And, and while I agree there may be differences between these two in cost, these in cost effectiveness, it's not at all obvious that, you know, bigger, fewer is better. It's, it's, and I don't think we're smart enough yet to, to dis distinguish those shades of gray. So I would just score them all as a one. Well, uh, well that, I, that would be consistent with your position. It would. But uh, let me add something to that, too. You know, the exploration preparation, it's not just about the launch vehicle. Um, and the deep space in particular, you know, the, these both, you know, they, they envision in-space architecture. Uh, they envision the, the uh, improved uh, technology right. development. Uh, you know, so if we're looking beyond just the launch vehicle, then right. I, um, you know, I'd argue that those should be plus one. Well, and, and that, Sally, was why the, the one that I was using as the key, which is six, compared to one, is actually incremented up one with the same launch vehicle and the same budget. I scored the deep space options as more capable or more, providing more exploration capability. Right? I, but, but, but then when you cut the budget... I just don't see budget on the exploration preparation scoring matrix. Right, right. I would also suggest, uh, Ed, that if we've eliminated something from the stack, that we ought to set the evaluation criteria for the range of options that we've got. You know, okay. we're giving something a lot of credit that that we've already taken off the list doesn't help us to differentiate between the ones that mm -hmm. are left. Well, now we're redefining the list and the evaluation criteria. <laughs> no, well, I, well, even if we don't go that far, I, I, I just, you know, I, I'm just reading the chart, and and I don't see the parameters that you're downscoring these on there. Well, one of the um, White House criteria is mass delivered to low Earth orbit, okay. and uh, in addition. As you understand, these these vehicles also have considerably different fairing sizes. Yes. So that uh, at least in the budgeted case for the hydrocarbon booster, it's 6.8 meters, compared, which is already a hammerhead fairing compared to 10 meters without a hammerhead and potentially 12 meters with a hammerhead. Uh, I quoted an exterior dimension in one case and an interior dimension in another. Forgive me, but the consistent <laughs> numbers would be 7.2 and 10 or 12, right? So. Um, you know, if you want to put big things in, into space, having a bigger vehicle allows you to put bigger things into space. I mean, that was my rationale for... Just going down. It, you're absolutely right, Sally, that okay. it's, it's not just the launch vehicle, but the launch vehicle's the first stage. But um, if, if we were to go back by the same criteria and score the, the, the line that's missing, which is 3B, 3B dollar sign, which is the, you know, exploration of the lunar surface, would you call that a zero or a one? Well, uh, let me just point out that um, now that we've, I think this is perhaps Wanda's point, now that we've eliminated some of these scenarios, particularly the unconstrained budget ones, uh, we have none of our supposed exploration scenarios which actually uh, score above zero in exploration preparation. So they're, they're not growing our ability to explore. And yeah. that just, I mean, it just doesn't sound right on the face of it. Yeah. It I'm, just, I'm, it is not, you know. In fact, I was just looking at this uh, deep space dual Aries light with plus our budget, <coughs> zero. And I read what uh, number two in exploration preparation develops operational robustness to explore destination beyond LEO. That's the most robust vehicle we have on, uh, in our list. That's the one that gives you to the moon about, I don't know, 15, 20 metric tons on each of the two launches. 
That's one that may allow you to convert Altair to a hypergolic. That's the one that flies a high Q at 700 PSF. I mean, that's the that's to me is robustness, operational robustness. And I would expect to, I would argue to have it two instead of zero for that case. And, and which case was that? I'm sorry. Oh, that's it. Six dollars. Six dollars. Well, you have zero. You see, I can't. I would. I can't pick on you yet because you established ground rules. Uh, unless I have a big well, over two points. Well, no, I everybody's speak. been picking so, on me for one, so you can on pick one on me that for I two. I do disagree by two points, and I think that okay. one should have. It's a six dollar sign should have two. It's the most robust case that we have on this list. No. And, and, and I, I differ from from Bo, but only by one. <laughs> See, there you are. <laughs> and, and I think the other two um, in the in the yellow that are left should be plus one. You know, I'm happy. Yeah, to, I, I I'm happy to go with the two on the first one, but the I other two should definitely be plus one. Yeah, I agree. With that. I have no objection. Otherwise, it looks like you're not doing it. Now, uh, we, we have to be careful because we also have to do the two that have to be penciled in here, which are which are three B dollar and five dollar. Yeah, three B dollar and five dollar, right? I don't see how the exploration preparation of five dollar is meaningfully different from the exploration preparation of seven S dollar. Unless you think that the the destinations and activities in one mode would be significantly different than the explorations and activities in the other. Okay, I hate to do this, but it's good. since we're on this point, I have to. That we're we're penalizing the lunar surface because. Mm -hmm. It's derived from the program of record, and the program of record had no plans to make use of the lunar surface in a way that robustly supported exploration preparation. Right. It's not like the lunar surface is a bad place to do it. It's just that we didn't we didn't we didn't choose to take our time to go off and redesign how a different, more exploration forward lunar surface set of systems would look. I, I, I asked a question. I didn't. I didn't. I, I well, didn't. The, the, so the problem is, which way you answer that question? It's hard to score, because are you scoring it exactly the way it is now, or are you scoring it the way that you could do it if you really value this metric? I, I, I think you'd uh, score it, since we've sort of redefined this to be the the more the more Mars forward version of the Moon. Then you'd score it that way. Then I would not distinguish between them. Okay. on the grounds of destination, right. in my opinion. And, and, yeah, I, I would agree with that. So we have to write some words around, around yeah, that. Right. So we would score three B dollar sign as a two and five dollar sign as a one, which is consistent with yes. what I have below. Now, Norm, sure. um, point, uh, point here for reference. Um, should we also score the two I suppose we should. That that are the constrained cases. Yeah. Right. Why yeah, not? I think right. So. Because we have Absolutely. to show the White House that their cases. Their yes, cases. And I, I I agree with your current scoring in those scenarios. Okay. Yeah, I do too. Okay. Yeah. So now we've got half of the first column done. Now. <laughs> I, well, I, was, I think we have the whole first column done. Actually. Actually. Well, no, because we haven't scored the two that are the constrained ones. We have to now score. Two and three B. Oh, well, that's what I just thought was oh. saying. I agree with your score. Oh, you agree with the scoring? Yeah. 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 Okay. We're done. Okay. And if it's any consolation, this is the only column I have all these notes on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Uh, I think maybe some explanation is required for people who are wondering why we're taking your time to do this. Uh, we're required by law to uh, publicly have this debate. And uh, we couldn't sit down ahead of time and kind of uh, figure out what we thought was right and come here and, and agree upon it. So uh, that's the reason for this agonizing uh, p procedure. And I'm prepared to stay here till midnight until we're done. So uh, get ready. Go. You don't have to stay. We have to stay. <laughs> 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 but uh, and the stenographer it's has a to law keep, that uh, I don't understand. I think it's impossible to work with, but that's the law, and so we will stay this as is long as we sunshine have. Sunshine and government at work. Column two. Okay. <laughs> so now we're uh, the the dominant factor in the evaluation that went into this was whether these programs had 
either elements that had significant technology associated with them, in the case of the hydrocarbon engine that accounts for the, the slight plus up, or whether they were associated with scenarios where there was the budget wedge. Now, if we put the budget wedge in all of them that we're carrying forward, ah, we're not carrying it in the two baselines. Correct. Right. Right. Um, so, I believe you have scored this correctly for yeah. all of those factors. Or within within one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're good to um, we we have to put in three um, three, three B, B three dollar B sign, five. which would be I think a one. That'd be a one. Yeah. And five B dollar sign would also be a one. Also be a one. Nine. Yeah. And um, three B would clearly not. Did 3B have the, the technology wedge in it? So it did. Yeah. Oh, it did. Yeah. So it would be a one. Yes. Mm -hmm. And. And that's the whole smash. Well, and and uh, the. No, uh, we need to do two. Two um, is correctly scored at a minus two. Yeah. 3B had the technology wedge in, in yes. two, yep. and two did not. Right. Right. Ed, okay. we're going to use your sheet as the master. So please make sure you're capturing these comments because yeah. I lost I lost lock on this about 20 minutes ago. Okay, well, so. in in the interest of um, assuring this master, we'll do uh, a wrap up. Maybe we'll do read back here, but we'll do it in real time. So the way I have this scored, and forgive me because the order might be a little different based on where you wrote things in. I have two as a minus two. 3B as a 1, 3B dollar sign as a 1, 5 dollar sign as a 1, 6 dollar sign as a 1, 7 dollar sign as a 2, and 7S dollar sign as a 1. Yep. Read back correct? Wait a minute, you have a, do you have a 1 or a minus 1? We're just reading the Excuse technology. me, I'm sorry, I read the wrong column. You got it right. <laughs> wrong column. Okay. Now, my good colleague, uh, Professor Chiba, has uh, left, and he was the domain expert for the science knowledge column. And it was very, it was fairly simple reasoning, which is that uh, if we thought there was a good chance to get, if he thought there was a good chance in the scenario to get to either the moon or a NEO, it got a one, and if there was a good chance to get to a moon and a neo, it got a two, because those he argued were the, the principal differentiating science objectives. So and he had four, he rated a two, and we took them all out. That's right, they're all gone. I yeah, so um, right now if you read down science uh, in uh, number t in option two, uh, my, rec uh, uh, my recollection, this, we would want to go back and check this. Actually, if we could agree to that scoring, we could just, um, we could go just take that as the rule and apply it, because otherwise we'd be remembering from memory through Sally's charts what, uh, yeah, why don't we do what, that? what was and wasn't. Just need yeah. to do 3B dollar sign and 5B. Yeah. Right. But, but, you know, it, and the Mars one is no longer relevant. So the idea being if you achieve one significant science in uh, planetary or subplanetary encounter, it's a one, and if you encounter two of them, it's a two. Okay. So 3B gets a... Well, we, what we have to do is we have to go back and look at the charts to see that's what right. actually happens. No, that's right, and I, I think those those charts are, uh, you know, what it, one iteration away from being able to look at that. Right. But we can fill in this. But right. that's you know, just going to be. If we agree on that, then right. we can we That'll can fill this in. That will be just a in. fact that falls out. Yes. That's right. Yes. It's just a decision rule that will will okay. apply. Okay. Um, human civilization. Um, Leroy. <laughs> I thought I was doing that one. Listen to me. You did it and then Leroy did. Maybe, yeah, okay. maybe both. Well, then I can argue with Leroy. Um, and actually, if you take off the corrections for more budget and less budget, which uh, the, 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 ar the way we argued this was that um,
What is subtract two for constraints? Well, it, okay. That's just my notes at yes, the sir. bottom. Okay. So we're, we're that, that if you if you didn't get past the ISS for all practical purposes. You got a minus one. So the the case um, the ISS the case three B, right. which is the ISS focused, gets an uh, makes one. arguably compared to Wanda's references less than a zero's worth of progress right. towards human civilization away from the Earth. Mm -hmm. Essentially, you're, you're still around the Earth. Mm -hmm. um, that um, and and the other ones that are associated with um, going to the moon, which would be now um, five dollar sign and, and three B dollar sign, would get a one because it addresses crew oriented effects to enable sustained human presence off the planet. Um, and I don't understand why the yellow scenarios don't do the same thing. Uh, <coughs> so uh, one could argue they do, uh, or one could argue that as the ultimate objective is, is civilization on a surface, they should be penalized for not going to a surface immediately, or also in this evaluation criteria, is the idea about uh, protection of this plant, the civilization on this planet, Which and you could argue plus. that going to NEOs should give them the credit back. That's I, sort of the reasoning here. I, I, I would opine that first, um, extraterrestrial resources brought to cislunar space are interesting as a future exploration enabler, and both the moon and NEOs play there. Right. Second, that in terms of studying the crew effects, i.e., how do you keep people alive away from the Earth um, long enough to get to Mars, both the Moon and long NEO missions shed equal light on that. Right. Um, yeah, the Moon is, is a bigger body, but the NEOs are also interesting for reasons of civilization protection here, so I think it's kind of a wash. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can buy that. I think so, too. So they're all ones? They're ones. So they're all ones except the two constrained ones. Let's go back and check those. The 3B, which is you don't get off the space station, is a minus one. Mm -hmm. And the program of record adjusted for risk constrained to FY10, boy, uh, it doesn't really do anything more than, this, than going to the space station either, does no, it? No, And doesn't. It, it doesn't even keep the space station up long enough to get value out of the space station, so that's, that's right. why it scored a minus two. Maybe minus two is yeah. right. Okay, so let me do the read back on this one, which is uh, the uh, number of scenario two is minus two. Scenario three B is minus one. Three B dollar sign is one. Five dollar sign is one. Six dollar sign, seven dollar sign, and eight S dollar sign are all one. Seven S dollar sign, yeah. Seven S dollar sign, I'm sorry. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So on to economic expansion. Now, uh, economic expansion includes things like uh, stimulation of the burgeoning commercial space industry and uh, uh, sustaining the uh, established industrial base in, in technology and aerospace. Uh, so, um, for example, a, a minus one is a weakens industrial base, limited opportunity for commercial goods and services, and a plus one is stimulates investment in new and existing capabilities. So why aren't all the ones that, uh, uh, that stimulate commercial crew to LEO plus one? Well, because some of them stimulate more things than others, right? But shouldn't they all be at least plus one as opposed to zero? Um, Since commercial crew to Leo. Yeah, that's probably if, right. If and only if, I would argue, they're the market that we're making for them is sustained enough that market. anybody would actually invest in it. Right. Mm -hmm. 
but it is certainly the intent to stimulate them with the commercial crew. And but as long as there's, as long as we actually buy commercial crew missions for long enough to make an industry, yes, I agree with you. Yeah. But these options would do that. Mm -hmm. And I, well, some of the reference options don't. But and and I believe that commercial crew is in all of these, right? And then the question yes. is, and this is sort of a double-edged sword. Uh, if you believe that along with the hydrocarbon booster goes a different business model uh, which will end up producing l less money flowing to the commercial community because it saves money, right? You can't take credit for stimulating more business by spending less money. Does, does that deserve any higher ranking or uh, yeah, Yes, you can stimulate new business by doing less money all easily, as long as you spend your less money in a way that's competitive. Uh, Fair to say. And, and, and is there much competition for a heavy hydrocarbon booster? That's not obvious. Um, but the heavy hydrocarbon booster goes with propellant transfer that most likely would be an additional stimulus to the commercial market by virtue of its smaller size. Um, yeah. Furthermore, all the yellow options, let us not forget, currently include a commercially sourced lander right. to match with the government ascent stage. Mm -hmm. So I really do think there's a significant qualitative difference between those and okay. the other options. So yeah. do you want to go to, um, to a, a, a two on those? Um, I want them to be one more than the other one. I've lost track of exactly what that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, within, that's within the precision, right? Well, I'm not sure. One more than the other one, meaning one more than the, the, the blue-derived the, options. The blue-derived options. And those look like uh, zero. Zero. Okay. As yeah. long as they're distinguishable, I'm okay. Okay. Although so. they're they're zeros, they do have they do have commercial crew. So we, they they do have commercial crew. So we, maybe yeah. we should make them ones I'm, and I'm twos. I'm happy to make yeah. them zero. I, I think the the difference between the blue and the and the yellow is what's the important one, yes. one here yeah. yeah i don't care if you call them zero and one well or because one. we also have to make the difference to the baseline so let's call the, the 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 blues one and the yellows two fine and then two is uh two is actually what wanda's um criteria are two is commercial systems form an integral part of the architecture right. which is accurately reflected there mm -hmm. um Okay, so now let's go back and you check. Know, I've got, I have a problem with this. We are, we are making too many positives out of this propellant transfer. You know, it's a complexity. It's an expense. It's a bad thing. You, you, you wish you didn't have to do it. And somehow we are, you know, uh, second time I, I'm hearing that that's a positive thing. We ought to give it credit. Because you know? we gave it credit in technology yeah. as well. Well, it, okay. Actually, we, we didn't give tech the propellant transfer. It's not the robustness case. It's just the opposite. It's a fragile situation when you have to count on stopping uh, in space someplace and do the rendezvous and God knows what and, and not crash and uh, not blow up uh, and not leak and, you know, and transfer propellant. So I, 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 I can't, you and, know, and I accept that this is... In technology innovation, yet, but we somehow ha have to find a negative of it. Well, we've got several other columns here that would, and probably a few of those would would speak to that. I don't think this is the column, though, to score uh, that potential no. problem. Safety and success yeah, might pick that up. Okay, maybe safety. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can live yeah, with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it actually goes, um, it's a good point, though, because... Actually, let me note in passing, though, that w the way we just scored it, we didn't actually invoke that to no. give a higher score to that option. No, we didn't. We, so we invoked one, we invoke. one increment for commercial crew and the second one for commercial in, Le in yes. Uh, Lander. Yes. Mm. Yeah. All right. So um, we're, we're still on oh, economic yeah. expansion, but, but we do want to respect Bo's point, is that, that when we go and look at the schedule risk, the schedule and programmatic risk, as the category is called in full, it's not just simply a matter of reading numbers off of the aerospace charts, but there has to be some additional uh, uh, technology associated or programmatically associated uncertainty or risk with those. Now, now you know, 
maybe the aerospace analysis with their correlation of cost and schedule risk has already put that in, but no, that, maybe not. But I, maybe I happen not. to agree with those points. The, the risk and technology are to a certain extent duels of each other. Right. Mm -hmm. And the problem is if you if you always only minimize the risk, you never get to the point where you wish to take the risk of inserting a technology, which is we have ample experience operating the program that way now and we know what that looks like. Okay. So we're still on economic expansion and we're going up to 3B, which is ISS focused. Um, and I think since that has commercial crew in it, the consistent rating of that would be a one. No. Right? Mm -hmm. I think that's right. Well, hang on. I, I lost track again. Is the one, the, the yellow options, did we call those ones or twos? Because they're. We called them twos. Okay, twos. then it's a one. And. Uh, Five. It's hard to see. And then the. Um, Five dollar ditto. Uh, no, we, no, we, no. We, the one we haven't done is number two, which is the constrained, but, uh, and help me, Sally, uh, two does not extend the sh station. Correct. Correct. So you would call it at least a zero. It has COTS cargo, but you would never, you'd never, get a commercial crew market going on a station that was going to be ended. Be brief. And right. commercial cargo would be just coming online about the time the station went away. Right. So I would suggest we score that at zero. I, or, or lower. Well, yeah, or I lower. think it's a minus one. Read your definition. Zero is it sustains the industrial base. Yeah. yeah this and is limited opportunity for commercial goods okay. and services. Right. Okay. And two does not have the technology budget line in it uh, no. either. So there's... Okay. So let me read, read this back. Uh, the two is a minus one. That uh, 3B is a one. That 3B dollar sign is a one. That five dollar sign is a one. And the yellow ones are all twos. Right? Okay. This this is economic expansion you just did, right? Yeah. E that's you economic expansion. Would you reminding us the columns because we, we get lost? I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> that was all on economic expansion. <coughs> yes, that's Thank right. you. Now, uh, the public engagement one is frankly very subjective. And that was hard? <laughs> <laughs> well, because it... <laughs> Thank you for that. That's why we went to all the work of doing this fine piece of work on the rubrics, right? <laughs> Because, but even by reading the rubrics, one realizes that the, the, ba the main distinguisher here is how much it interests the public and how much it allows engagement and how much it excites the youth. And education. Well, and education. Propose a measure. It has two criteria. Uh, criteria. One is uh, that. Uh, it ends up going going someplace or doing something really interesting, and secondly, that you don't have to wait 20 years to do the first event. You have events right. along the way. Right. And if we use that, it falls out, I think, pretty easily. Right. So what I the my, that was my rationale, Norm, is okay. that the ones were because this the, the the flexible path takes us to places that we have not been, and is designed to have a cadence of flights there. Right. Uh, Whereas um, the uh, the lunar ones suffer from the problem that when you explain to many of your neighbors that we're going to the moon, they say, "Haven't we done that?" Yeah. And the uh, the ISS one was even by Leroy's agreement one notch down from that. Mm -hmm. I think that's true. When Leroy tells people he went to the ISS, they say, "Where's that?" <laughs> Um, so, uh, so if that, there's general agreement on that, then I'll say, that let me do the, the, the read through, is that 2 is a 0, 3B is a minus 1. We're doing public engagement now, right? 3B is a minus 1. Right. I, I actually don't think we changed any of these. 
No. The, the shuttle extension, which, uh, which goes eventually, uh, I'm sorry, uh, it's a minus. Th 3B dollar sign. Hold on a second. Did you say two was a zero? I said two was a zero. Right. Mm -hmm. or, or is that not true? Well, do, I does, don't it, see does it get to the moon? Yeah, I don't see how it can be rated higher than 3B. Yeah, I agree. Because I agree. Yeah, you know, with two, you, you lose the station. Although, deorbiting the station would engage the public. <laughs> be a surge in interest, yeah. Who, who was it who told us the story? They sent the command to deorbit uh, Skylab. Hawes. Yeah, Hawes. Hawes. Yeah. Did, are you famous for that, Mike? Oh, he's not here. And he landed in the middle of Australia, too. <laughs> I, I would agree with you. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so what are you going to give? So we're, we're going to give two a minus one at your recommendation. <clears throat> and uh, two a minus one and three B a minus one. Mm -hmm. And three B uh, dollar sign. Yeah. Hey, Ed, in fairness, to, in fairness. No, because three B dollar sign actually gets to the moon. Yeah, and to, 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 to some, something doesn't seem fair on this public engagement. I don't understand why POR is lower, er, rated lower than, let's say, uh, Duo Aries. Well, uh, let, let me try to explain, Bo. Well, the yeah, line just, two is the is which is POR constrained to the budget doesn't actually get. I'm talking unconstrained budget. No, two is POR constrained to the budget. No, but my question was on number line number one. Oh, we're not, we're, we're not ranking number. Oh, number okay. One. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you okay? Mm -hmm. Right, because because we're not we're not going to. That's being shown for reference, but. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So uh, line two, uh, 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 option two is minus one, <clears throat> because it doesn't actually get to the moon. Line 3B is minus 1. Line 3B dollar sign, which we think does get to the moon, gets a 0. The shuttle extension, which we think does get to the moon, gets a 0. And the yellows get a 1. What was 5B? I'm sorry. I'm sorry? What was 5 dollar sign? Five dollar sign was a zero. Gets to the moon. Okay. Now, um, Leroy's input on the global partners one was interesting, uh, which essentially summarized the, the situation as follows: that right now, what the what the what the global partners care about is extending the ISS. And the things that terminate the ISS will cause a reaction. I think those uh, should be minus twos. Will cause, I'm trying to find the word, be a huge disrupt yeah, inter existing international like partnerships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd go with a minus yeah, two. I would, yeah, yeah, I would, I would, I would do that. Two. I think those are minus twos, and I think all the yellow ones, we just ought to put TBD because we don't. Well, what, what, we, what we did is, we, we assigned a zero to anything other than the ones that turned off the space station. Yeah, we uh, assigned a zero to anything that kept the space station. So I'm sorry, we, we kept a zero, we assigned a zero to anything that kept the space station. Because there's and, not and, a definition and, to, to differentiate between the different scenarios. I think that's okay. And, mm -hmm. and, and we argued that, you know, in, in view of the fact that it requires commitment by the IPs to be involved in these, it, we, would, we would commit the sin of trying to project onto the international partners what we thought their intent was, and therefore was best left as just penalize the ones that shut off the ISS and leave the others at zero. I, I agree. I think, you know, in the report we can certainly reflect that our view is that we think it is good to encourage the engagement, but not sure. to take credit for it. So, but, but presumably in less a section that there'll be a, a, a discussion of that. Agreed. Right, exactly. So it's the difference between an evaluation criteria and a, an, an additional finding. You know, it may be worth noting that the, uh, all of the flexible path scenarios probably leave uh, quite a bit more room 
for international partnership yeah. mm -hmm. um, than uh, than the other the other scenarios. I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, you know, the 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 internationals actually uh, have, in the course of the discussion of the that NASA has had with them in the last year, uh, warmed to the idea of supplying components, doing parallel logistic streams to the surface. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you you would have to imagine. Uh, that um, we have pictures of American astronauts in the moon, and no other nation does. So the, the, the appeal of, of uh, having their national astronauts stand with their flag on the moon would be quite compelling. So I, I'm not sure that I would, I would find a basis for, for, um, for differentiating the two in terms of international participation. You know, I suppose it, it depends on how much uh, of the architecture you think is relatively well determined already. Mm -hmm. um, because one of the things that we heard pretty loud and clear is that they'd, they'd like to be, um, you know, more directly involved in, uh, you know, the process of getting there. Yeah, the critical uh, path. The critical <coughs> path. Um, and think that they have some systems to contribute. Um, you know, I don't want to. I'm, I'm not making a big a big case for for this one, but I, you know, um, I've come away with the impression that there's there are more opportunities um, in the flexible path scenario for hmm. the international partners. Well, I, I agree, but I, I think it's hard to determine, which is why we kind of left yeah, it zero. But I mean, it's hard to. I don't know. I, I would tend to leave it at, at at Leroy's suggestion here. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. So we have um, line two, and now we're under global partners. Line two is minus two because it's the one left that closes the ISS, and the rest are all zeros. All right. Okay. Great. Sustainability. Now, sustainability is a rather complex one, and even within the definitions there's a lot of, um, well, actually, the rubrics are, are sort of symptomatic as opposed to uh, descriptive. You know, it, you would have to understand that something was going well or something was going poorly in order to understand how much advocacy you would require or would, be, would flow. So let me, let me read you the, um, the, the guidance from the statement of task from OSTP that's under here. Norm, this is uh, where the input, that, this is where we keep, bookkeep the input that's been given to you by OSTP about uh, contractual implications. Uh, the potential to enhance sustainability of human spaceflight activities, which is a completely generic statement. The implications for transition from the current human spaceflight operations. In other words, this is where the the transition uh, risk and agony would be reflected. And the benefit to US government defense and intelligence space related capabilities. So this is where the uh, other government agency benefits are also book kept. So this is actually sort of a rich category mm -hmm. uh, when, you, when, you, uh, when you analyze it this way. So I think what we did on, in the. On, on the other hand, Ed, if you also recognize that there's a fiscal response risk here that applies across the board. That there's what, I'm sorry, one? A fiscal risk in the fact of, of just trying to maintain the funding, as mm -hmm. we've seen with right. uh, the Right, but, but that, uh, I would argue that's an effect and not a cause. I mean, you have trouble maintaining the budget because of these other factors. Uh, I, I guess it's about commitment and uh, will. You know, do we have a national will to do this? Mm -hmm. So the, what, what you see here is basically um, the, let's see, oh, Jeff, you did this, and I don't remember how much of it you changed. But, but what got graded down here is, is the case where there is significant disruption in the NASA organization in order to go to the new change of business, uh, the new, cha new, new way of doing business which is associated with the hydrocarbon booster. And you know, we don't disagree that that's the case. You take it as a, a financial benefit, and you, you, take, you penalize the, 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 uh, the risk. And in fact, I, I um, scored at a minus one 
the uh, Ares 5 dual light because, of course, there is no Ares 5 contract, but there is an Ares 1 contract. So the cancellation of the Ares 1 would, would cause disruption, although there's a good deal of commonality, there would be a contractual either renegotiation or recompetition that would be associated with there. Uh, and I didn't actually know how to, how to think through the shuttle-derived vehicle. I suspect that would be likewise a fair amount of, I mean, you wouldn't automatically give to Boeing the contract it, well, for, it depends. for the you know, shuttle-derived vehicle just because they built the shuttle. You could also argue that if you did shuttle-derived vehicle and uh, if in that case you said you ought to continue the shuttle, and that's the least disruptive. Well, that's why we scored it a zero. Whereas I thought you the, said, let's see. Yeah. We're in sustainability. You see, the SDV ones okay, okay. are a zero. The uh, Aries 5, because it terminates the Aries 1, was a right. minus 1. And the, the hydrocarbon booster was a minus 2, because it's not only a change in contract, but a change in, in organizational behavior of NASA and workforce and so forth. No, I, work, no. I think the continuation of the shuttle goes to the serial now listed here, the five dollar. The right, uh, uh, we, yeah, that's right. We, we, because I think he's saying that might actually be more popular because it's you know all, all those people who current not only does everybody keep doing what they're doing, but all those people who are afraid that we're going to stop doing what they're doing get told they get right. to keep doing it. So I, I, you know, we could move them to plus one, zero, and minus one, but. Uh, I was reading the rubrics, and zero is sufficient public and congressional support. Uh, you know, one is plus broad support from industry and external agencies, e G okay. e EI, the DOD. It's more popular, but not with more stakeholders. Right. Okay. I mean, in order to get to a two here, well, that's. I think I think we need to be careful that we don't redefine sustainability. Sustainability, sustainability to just mean uh, non-disruptiveness. It's more than that. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to raise the point that that while I absolutely agree that a change in the way of doing business as radical as we've contemplated under um, option seven is a huge disruption. Um, I also think that it, you know at the end of the day, DoD is getting a much better booster in their stable. And I'm not at all sure that, that that's not a, a partially offsetting factor under this metric the way you have it defined. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> does, does DOD want this booster, though? As long as they don't have to pay for it. And as long, oh, as, they get, know, as, long as they get to manage the program so that with other people's money, those are good things. Mm. There's a, yeah, there's got, a, 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 a complex <laughs> statement. There is. I, I'm asking the question. I'm not, I'm not taking the position. <clears throat> <clears throat> also, Norm, in this category, it would be the, uh, the, the pattern of interim accomplishments, which would right. probably tend to cause the yellow ones to drift up a bit. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that you, every year you can tell the Congress, and every two years you no, can tell the president something. that you did something, you know. <laughs> um, so if we wanted to, to, to cause all of the yellow ones to drift up as a group because of that pattern, I'm good with that. You know, we, we've got to be all very careful in defining this because a big factor in sustainability is going to be the, the cost, the magnitude of it. But we've really stripped that out. To well, another. that's right. It, that's the, the cost is reflected right. in the cost right. category, and the schedule is in the schedule category. This is, you know, for fixed cost and schedule, how, how easily are you going to find advocacy, to use Wanda's term, within the within the policy community. So how about rereading where we think we are? Well, I, I think there was a, everyone just sort of nodded if we said we took the yellow ones and bumped them up one so that. Uh, <coughs> Seven is as minus one. Um, and let's see, did we. Um, Six dollars, zero. So let, let me try. I'm not sure we've, we've actually gone through the whole list. The, the two, um, the program record adjusted the budget, I would think would be about a minus one on this scale. Because of lack of results. Because of lack of results. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're just going to go an entire decade before something gets flown there in the 20s. 
as it's currently now structured, that the ISS would be about a, uh, the, uh, that is to say, 3B would be about a zero, and I think 3B star, hmm. here you have to weigh how much support you'll get for the continuation of the shuttle-based system. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I misspoke. 3B star doesn't doesn't does not have the shuttle base system. So I think we'd call that a zero. And in five dollar sign, you would probably take some credit for the shuttle extension. I would think. A one or something. Call that a one. And then you'd bump up the yellows. To zero, minus one, and one. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So let can me read I, that I be back. Just a little argumentative here for a moment. Uh, you know, I, I believe there's a cadre of people that would argue shuttle extension could, slows us down from doing other things that we'd like to do. Uh, so I, I don't know that it's uniformly would be viewed as um, something that people would support. Um, you're, you're absolutely right, and, and um, I'm trying to think about the way to say this without sounding like a professor. <laughs> what I want to say is you've got to decide whether it's the partial derivative or the total derivative. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 were, you were unsuccessful in that. Both short -term poll. So yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, the engineer could probably decide. I think it's understand a partial derivative. Yeah. Uh, it, it, and the sense that, that really the way we sort of set this up, one I think is that each of these should be judged as an individual consideration, rather than coupling it back through partial the budget. Partial derivative. Right. So if you just looked at the policy aspects, independent of schedule change, and you know, would it be more more difficult to find av advocacy for this one or that one. Right. Did I do that better that time? Yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> You could run for office now. I want to make a very quick <laughs> comment. Just, it doesn't change anything about this whole notion of, you know, contract disruption as, a, as a, an element of sustainability. Um, it's real. The, the people who are losing something always fight harder the, against it than the people who are gaining something will fight for it, always. Um, but the, it's it's a uh, it's an uh, having having that under sustainability is an odd place to bookkeep it because those are those are sort of transitional pain, mm -hmm. you know, four or five years down the road, that's all over, and the new winners become the established stakeholders, and the old losers have moved on, and and uh, and so while it's a real effect and it drives a figure of merit, it's just a it, the nomenclature is strange. Well, so, so I, I vote we note it and move on. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you. He, he wanted to make thank you for that. that. Okay. Safety, success. So let's um, let's review sustainability. Um, two has a minus one. Three B has a zero. Three B dollar sign also has a zero. Five dollar sign has a one. Six dollar sign has a zero. Seven dollar sign has a minus one. Mm -hmm. And seven S dollar sign has a one. One. Okay. Sold. Now, <clears throat> this is the next category of safety and mission success and yeah. so forth. Is, are, you, um, are you saying that, uh, is, say it again, what uh, seven and, and seven is one? Seven S dollar sign is one. Okay. Right. Now, um, in the safety category, there, there, there has been quite a debate which has gone back and forth within the subgroup that was working on defining these uh, metrics, which uh, Wanda alluded to in her introduction of them yesterday. I have a suggestion. Earlier today, I guess it was. <laughs> hey, Ed, I have a suggestion to make your life easier. Everything has a commercial crew minus one. Everything has a, uh, ref a refueling minus two. 
it's a good I am for that suggestion. <laughs> yeah. So here, here are the, uh, the here is the idea that's captured in in Wanda's rubrics. First, that this is this is loss of crew and loss of mission for the entire mission, not just assent. Mm -hmm. Right. So saying so, making an assertion which we did in the rubric that the that zero is a, a loss of crew comparable to the shuttle is actually uh, synonymous with saying that we have a far more reliable launch system because there are so many other things that the crew will be exposed to as potential hazards that if the whole system ends up being comparable to the shuttle, we'll have done well. Mm -hmm. right. I don't see how, for example, uh, circumnavigating Mars doesn't have to be much more risky than flying a shuttle. And in some of these scenarios, if, given the choice, what should you rather do? <laughs> uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why you're not an astronaut. These two are. Yeah, they, well, I've we, done shuttle. I'll go. I'll go around Mars. Yeah, me too. <laughs> We're going to get you both another shot. Remember, John Glenn got a second bite at the apple. You may. Uh, yeah. Well. We'll we'll talk about that later. But, but shouldn't uh, they be a minus one or something? Well, the 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 other point, which maybe is the one Wanda should should make, because it's her point. It, there's actually two issues. One is that at the level of analysis that we've done, it's actually very difficult to figure out the relative hazards and and uh, and, yeah. and safety levels of these concepts. But you can do a relative mission challenge, mission di difficulty, and certainly the yellow ones are more difficult missions than the shuttle. Well, the yellow ones involve two launches from planetary surfaces. That's what I said. And and the I'm sorry the 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 the, the blue ones, the blue ones you land and take off twice. Those are the riskiest parts of human spaceflight. The yellow one you only land and take off once. Well, that that may be. I'm just arguing that there shouldn't be zeros. There should be negatives on these things. <laughs> oh, that they're all more risky. That they are all riskier than flying in a shuttle. That would be my my view. Well, here are the two experts. Uh, that can't be right because one of these options is, you know, we just we don't do anything except go to ISS for the rest of time. Thank you. You know that that's that 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 that's not, that, that better not be more risky than what we're doing now. <laughs> sure. Yeah, three yeah. yeah, B. Just the yellow options. Options. Zero. We're okay. It's not all of them, right? No, I I think everything. Well, let's see. The the ones that just go to the space station, right. I guess, could be a zero, right. but the rest of them, I think, are minus ones. Anyway, well, the, well if, but if still, we, it, none it, of the it, options it, for crew huh? transport to the ISS, commercial or government, um, lack the addition of a serious escape capability. So if, if those aren't significantly safer than the shuttle, we're doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah, but we, and Ed, Ed you kind of changed the numbers after our discussion yeah. <laughs> all the zeros, because we had talked about because the commercials are unknown, we had said that that's probably a little less safe. Just because You're right. We don't, I did just that. because we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't have a pedigree. Um, I would almost say that the safety, you know, should be moved over with the other things because we just don't know. With the, I mean, with the schedule, program risk, and life cycle costs, which Would are left undefined. Because I don't know how we. Yeah. Well, the the, well, we'll the schedule, that. life cycle cost, and are, are intended that we will fill in when we get the data. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, now you're actually coming back to Wanda's original position, yeah. Yeah. which is that you, you basically <clears throat> set a safety criteria. Yes. Uh, and, and it's not a differentiator. And it's not a differentiator, that you would not fly crew unless you could convince yourself in one of these concepts. Well, maybe you, maybe yeah. we should change the title to be safety success challenge. The challenge, uh, because as, as you say, they're all going to be safe or we won't do them. On the other hand, the challenge of some of these is just a lot greater. That's important in making a decision. Yeah, the difficulty in, in making it safe enough to go. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah, no, safety, I mean, um, it, it's, uh, it's interesting to lump these, a whole scenario into one number on safety. Right. Mm -hmm. Because every scenario includes getting crew to and from Leo. Right. 
And <clears throat> most of these scenarios involve taking people a long way out. Mm -hmm. and right. exposing them to significantly higher risks mm -hmm. right. for a variety of different reasons. <clears throat> you know, uh, so Apollo <laughs> would clearly not score as comparable to the shuttle in safety if you were to take an honest look at it. A what? Apollo would clearly not score right. as, you right. know. Right. Yeah, that's right. And, and you see, I, And yet it, Apollo was 10 for 10 and the shuttle is 2 for, or. Yeah. So yeah. The, what, what, what you've sort of done is define yeah. this as, as uh, <laughs> as hazards in the in the safety lingo, right? You, this is the hazards analysis, what hazards will be encountered. The, yeah, you could call it as safety as success, hazards, yeah. uh, whatever, or the but, challenge. But now the problem is, is you know, do, do we have actually enough insight to know that is, it's more hazardous to spend 180 days in free space as opposed to 180 days on a planetary surface? Yeah, which because are both you in have the plan. to land on the planetary surface. Land, land and get off. You got to get off of it. Yeah, but surface. then the the radiation <clears throat> risks are are a, lar are a large unknown and are a bigger problem in deep space than they are on the planetary surface. Right, because you have twice the galactic cosmic yeah. uh, cosmic galactic radiation. Hey, but going back to this refueling, I, I I have a problem accepting the fact that fueling on the ground and flying is not safer than fueling on the ground, flying, and then trying to refuel it again in space. It's a huge complexity. And, and, right. and if and, you, and if you like, try to write hazard analysis, you, you know, you do it forever, almost. So I, I think there should be a di differentiation between those that do and, those, and from those that do not require refueling on orbit. Or in space. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure that that, you know, given the overall complexity of each of the scenarios, I'm not certain that the refueling ones, just looking only at the refueling, I'd say um, it's less safe. Um, you know, that I mean, space station, we've learned to do an unbelievable number of things on space station. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely incredible what, um, you know, what, what we're able to do with, with EVAs and also with robotics and just putting things together and, and moving things around. I mean, it's, it's incredible. So we've learned a ton um, and we'll learn a lot more that are going to help mitigate those risks. But, you know, my, my main point is, um, you know, for these, these scenarios that, uh, that envision refueling, that's really just a part of it. And the ones that don't may have 180 day transit times with exposure to galactic radiation. They may have, um, you know, different landing scenarios. They may have launch scenarios that are riskier. Sure. So there's, there's just, you know, I'm, I'm actually right back on zeros for all of them because I don't know how to differentiate because they're, um, you know, we're really talking apples and oranges within every different scenario. Yeah, and the then, problem. you know, yeah. pairs and kumquats from uh, scenario to scenario, but and th this is it's it's too you know it's too simplistic a system and too complex a problem to try to to but, to differentiate and they're you know basically exploration is risky, space yeah. flight is risky. We're going to do it as safely as we can, or we're not going to be doing it. Um, I would say that th for all the options we have, we didn't see anything that said we could not get comfortable that we could design mm -hmm. it to be safe. Yeah, and that's, and that's why I like Norm's suggestion. Let's let's change this to uh, kind of the challenge of what, what your difficulty factor right. of, yeah. of getting it to that point. If you know, you because even there, kinda... we have such huge uncertainty over, <clears throat> I mean, just over which which elements are really the hard ones to go solve. Well, well, well but I mean, you should look at ISS and then, okay, we're going to, back to ISS with a you know uh, either shuttle or something like oh, yeah, that. Yeah, if you That's, say going to ISS is easier than going into deep space, woo but then, yeah. but then if you well, and and I have to agree with Bo. I mean, you're you're if you're going to do refueling, maybe that's something that will turn out to be relatively easy to do. But nonetheless, you've added that operation, so by as, definition, as a hazard, it's a more difficult. It's a hazard. And, and you know, and yeah. Sally, I, I think I have to support Bo in this that. You know the 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 uh, comparison between transferring uh, water and so forth in the space station, as opposed to fueling a, a deep cryogenic <clears throat> stage on orbit, 
Well, cryo is a different well, thing. Yeah. Well, that's what refueling is. Yeah. Well, refueling but I mean, is, if we're talking, is, is, it depends is, on the fuel because on well, station the, we do UDMH and well, no, but, but the fuel we're yeah, talking exactly. about is 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 liquid hydrogen. Yeah, liquid hydrogen is a whole different thing. And we have we have <laughs> received you know how testimony many after testimony on, on expert ground after because expert. of hydrogen yeah, leakage. Yeah, 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 I know. On ground. On ground. We, we yeah. couldn't launch. You know, on the ground. Well, you got a lot of air around on the ground. Well, and you we've received space. We've received testimony that it's at a TRL level no, of three or four. Have you done that? It's at a TRL level of five. No. If you get late. Yeah. Have you done this? Hey, how about this? Uh, we're we're not trying to compare these things with each other. We're trying to compare, or let, I th let me propose that we compare the challenge <clears throat> of doing this. And we're not comparing them so much with each other as we are, it says here, risk compared to the shuttle. And so the ISS flights get a zero. Uh, everything else, I'd give a minus two, uh, just because it's that much more difficult than flying a shuttle. But a minus two would say we wouldn't do it, or, or that we would, we would advise against it, I guess, as opposed well, maybe to... No, it's, but it's a challenge. It's it's not, we, remember, we changed challenge. it. Okay. We're going we're gonna to meet the challenge and make them all zeros, as Sally says. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like we could rename this technical challenge instead of safety and mission success, well, because we're going to try to, we're going to do no, this. No, it's the challenges that are associated with creating hazards that in, well, impact we're dealing life. Well, technically and, dealing with those technical yeah. But there are other technical challenges that we wouldn't want to weigh in here, I think. Yeah. Just keep it to. So no. Safety, so safety, safety challenge. Is getting safety agreeable. challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Safety, safety, safety challenge. challenge. To space station is a zero because that's comparable to shuttle and everything else is a minus two. But then we make the point. Well. That, uh, it, you, that doesn't mean you're going to live with that. The, the, I mean, if you look at the rubrics <clears throat> that one had derived, maybe it's one and minus one. Because the rubric for one is enhanced crew safety consistent with new human rating requirements. Now, I realize that's a, that really is a safety, not a hazards statement, right? Well, I think we've got to redefine this block to be consistent with the notion of challenge as opposed to mission success. Yeah. Yeah. It is based on mission success. Yeah. Right. Either way, it's a delta of two. So well, well but you know, if it's we'll clean it up, if you redefine it as challenge, you even more should be concerned about this these missions that involve uh, refueling in space. It's and, a big deal. And, and or I mean, multiple, this is like almost multiple a assembly program, and you know, operations to get this uh, uh, refueling in space done, and and GNNC and ground and mission control and. Sensors. I mean, you know, and you have to do it so you don't collide, don't collide, and so you transfer fuel safely. It's a, it's a, to me, it's a huge safety risk. Yeah. It sounds like coming to a gas station, putting your car, and I. To I draw know. this to a close, why don't we uh, redefine this challenge? Show it's a much greater challenge than the shuttle. And change the wording here so that it matches challenge as opposed to an assessment of the safety. But I have to say, I have to agree with Bo in this. I think that some place on here, if we're taking the credit for the for the fuel transfer, multiple vehicle operations with smaller vehicles, yeah. we have to some place show the, risk. the associated risk with that. Well, you already scored it lower on sustainability, quote unquote. Or you can make a minus one and minus two if you want. If you're going to transfer fuel, you make a minus two. Everything else is a minus one. We scored it low in sustainability because of the transition in, in contractual arrangements, not having anything to do with the fact that it had big tanks or small tanks. Just let me let me say this, and then I will bow out. Okay, the we have never seen a scenario. I mean, we say we're trying to go to Mars. We have never seen a credible scenario that does not involve propellant transfer in space. None. So, you know, we can make all the song and dance we want about, oh my God, it's hard, oh, and it may be, it may be really hard. Guess what? If we're serious, we have no choice. Well, I, I don't think rating it down doesn't mean we're not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, just, I think it's, we're trying to do a relative, relative risk. So with that, I will, I will, I will acquiesce. Okay. Well, let, let me make a suggestion and see how it works here, which is, that I think we should call the ISS focused one a one under the principle that going up and down to the ISS in a new vehicle should, uh, a new, new vehicle in the, well now it's whether it's hazards or, or failure effects. 
what I, what I was trying to get to is that you know doing it in a new vehicle would be less hazardous because the vehicle would have been developed under the new standards. But I'm not sure. I'm That's what they thought about the shuttle. Yes. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Never flown. Okay. Yeah. So let's never, put it right? Yeah. Never uh, yeah. assess safety till you've flown a few times. All right. Never fly on an airplane well, with a tail that's number a less than ten. position of the crew office. Yeah, never fly the A model. <clears throat> never fly the A um, <laughs> Give us a proposal here, Ed. So, so if we reference the the three uh, B ISS focus commercial crew, et cetera, to to zero, mm -hmm. um, I would recommend that the ones that involve either going in the yellow zone or the blue zone to be minus one, but that. The, the, we, the, the ones that involve significantly more fueling and, and launch operations in order to do that get minus two. That's sure. I could live with that. Okay. Uh, before we go into the next one, Ed, just a point of clarification. Uh, you may be surprised to hear that we still have an audience on NASA TV. And uh, in terms of the dollar signs, that is consistent with the less constrained options. Is that correct? Yes, that's okay. right. So we have the, the constrained options, which fit within the budget. Then we had unconstrained, which we have eliminated. And now the ones with the dollar signs are in the less constrained sat category, consistent with Sally's presentation earlier, where we bumped it up to what we thought was a reasonable level, just so people can follow along on NASA TV. OK, keep going, Ed. Thanks. You want to call it out, Ed? I'm yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, what the actual it was implication. Fire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Five dollar sign and three B dollar sign. Since they're not on the sheet, that's where people were confused. Yeah. Um, so so let's start from the top by those rules. The program of record would be a minus one. That's number two. Three B would be a zero. The shuttle extension would be it's five that yeah it's five dollars five dollar sign i'm sorry to do this to you ed but number if number two which is the constraint of the budget we don't actually ever go beyond iss in that option <laughs> <laughs> that's um well, got that's true do we do we, do, do, do we give it credit for going nowhere <laughs> it's 2028 to, to, to use sure. this whole if you take with the one yeah. hand you have to give with the other i think yes yeah I it's not like we scored it for all the things it wanted to do. <laughs> I right. thought Aries 5 flew in 2028. But it doesn't leave Leo because it's got nowhere to go. It doesn't go, go anywhere. It doesn't have anything to... It's ready. Yeah. Right. Um, all right. It's all dressed up. Yeah, okay. I can leave with that. So... Uh, Our standards are going what, what I'm struggling <laughs> with here is um, <clears throat> whether we differentiate in terms of this operational complexity the shuttle derived vehicles and the ELVs from the Aries, or do we put the, sh the, the shuttle derived vehicles at about 100, 108 ton capacity with the Aries and differentiate the other one? It's I almost like are, are they different only by one? Yeah. I don't care. Okay. Well, okay. Then, then here's my proposal that, uh, and remind me what 3B. Sign. Oh yeah, that's right. So that would be a minus one. Okay. So here's here's the proposal that uh, number two gets a zero by virtue of the fact that it doesn't get anywhere. Number three B gets a zero by virtue of the fact that it's just going up and down to the space station. The shuttle extension, I'm sorry, three B dollar sign gets a minus one because of the inherent risks of going towards the moon. Five dollar sign also gets a minus one yep. due to the inherent risks of going to the moon. Six dollar sign gets a minus one due to the inherent risks in going various places away from the Earth. And that the other two get minus twos because of both the inherent risk of going those places and the complexity, except I misscored the shuttle extension. So let me do that again. <laughs> Number two, well, Norm said we'd be here till midnight. I think we'll make it by nine. Uh, nor, uh, number two is zero. Number 
3B is zero. Number 3B dollar sign that gets out of low Earth orbit is minus one. Number five dollar sign which gets out of low Earth orbit and has the operational complexity is minus two. Minus two? Uh, minus two. The deep space six star, uh, six dollar sign is minus one. The seven dollar sign is minus two. And the seven S dollar sign is minus two. Unless you just wanted to take all of those and add one so that instead of having zero, minus one, and minus two, you had minus one, zero, and plus one. I think you better leave it the way it is. Leave it the way it is. Okay. Very good. Okay. Now the next category is NASA and industry workforce. Here's one is I might interject uh, the changes we've been working on. We've really broken that into two columns. One is critical skills, which is the next one here. And the first one is the, Nash is the NASA workforce. And those are just going to fall out of the dollars. So there's really no, the ratings are going to come out automatically from the computer. So I don't think we have to do anything on those. I think the computer right. will fill in the algorithm. blanks. Yeah, they're, they're, I'll tell you, you, you notice my notation down there on the um, HC, which I think uh, merits a, a, a little uh, discussion before we go. I, I think the workforce one, you're right, Norm. I think the workforce one to first approximation is dollars and cents. You know, you're right. I misspoke. You're absolutely I right. Think the skill, the skill one one is different. Is a little different. So, absolutely. So in order to highlight that difference, you see that little annotation there. I couldn't figure out whether I'd score seven, uh, uh, scenario seven, as a plus one or a minus one. And here was the reasoning. It's a plus one because you, you train a whole generation of people to build a new big hydrocarbon engine. And it's a minus one a because you lose the solids. Yep. Yeah. Sort of so, is that a, so it's a value judgment as to which part of the skilled workforce is more important. Well, I, I don't mean to put such a sharp edge on it, but, no. but there's a flavor of that, that there's a value judgment about what, what is the skilled workforce you have to maintain before it makes sense to rate this. Which I, th th I think you can build the argument that uh, being good in one area doesn't offset being poor in another area, so I would give it the lower number. Mm. Mm. You know, you, you can't offset not being able to build microchips by being good at uh, high energy propellants. So I, th I think that could get taken down. So you would look at the, at the most important or severe loss of a key national skill as the way you would rate it? I think for the level of detail we're doing here, that's what I do. I give it a minus one. Okay. I mean, politically, again, you know, stakeholders losing something always care more than the stakeholders gaining something. The theory of regret. Right. That you have to deal with the regret created by a decision more than the benefits created. And then you've got one that's somewhere between a zero and a minus two. Well, that was just the same one shifted, so you can ignore well, that, that. That's, yeah. Um, well, using that criteria, let's, let's try. I think in this case, you would say the program of record, oh, I'm sorry. Um, well, I think you'd say number two was something like a minus one, just because it will take so long and, and the investment will be so low right. that um, you know, the, the, it will be difficult to maintain the skill base. And I think you'd assign the same score to the other constrained budget case, number 3B. Then you would go to 3B star, the 3B dollar sign, and you would say, is the acceleration of the program in that one going to create significant, so I guess that probably goes to something like a zero, which is defined in the 
rubric is maintain selected critical skills and experience. But, okay, none of these options with the exception of five, do we get rid of the, the big gap in operation of shuttle heritage systems? And so yeah, those things that are accelerating, but but you know the only things that you're afraid of losing in those scenarios, you have to be afraid of losing whether you spend more money or less. Well, but to a certain extent, Sally's just left the room. To a certain extent, that um, we put in the carrying costs in order to keep those capabilities alive. The consistent thing would be to give it credit for keeping them alive. But this is about critical skills and, and the skill we're talking about is the skill of operations skills. and I don't know as hmm. an operator whether I, just, I don't think that's, that's an important point, point. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's right mm -hmm. I think you take it down I, mean, so I, I, I think this is the case where there's you know if, if the only thing that scores high on this is the shuttle extension because that's the only scenario in which you don't have people standing around for five years going, I wonder if I remember how to do this. Yeah, that's true. Probably right. Mm -hmm. So you make the shuttle extension a zero? Or a one, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, a zero, because it just maintains. It still doesn't do any improvement. Baseline. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And you would move the 3B dollar sign to a minus one because of the gap what mm -hmm. you're saying and the um, the other ones will be minus ones probably as well right right I mean if if, if it's, it's the only one that doesn't continue the show if if the if the criteria is the the worst thing that happens mm -hmm. um, so let me try reading you that now before we go off that is it really true that the, when you when you define this norm as critical skills, critical national skills, that you were thinking about the operational. No, well, that was one of the many things. It would be uh, could we pour large solid propellant uh, rocket motors, uh, things of that type. But well, I think if, uh, well. if you made a, if you made a, a short list, we could test the hypothesis that these should all be minus ones because I mean some have the solid rocket motors and some don't. So if you thought that was on your list of key skills, I, maybe they're all. I minus think one. you 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 shouldn't underestimate the operational skills. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a big th one. That's a big one. That's hard stuff. Well, I understand. I also know that from 1973 to 1981, there was one five-day mission, and we, as ASTP. Well, it doesn't mean it's not overcomable, but it's yeah, yeah. It's, well, a, it's an impact. All and, technologies and it, that you lose, if you want them badly enough, you can get them back. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> eventually. Uh, and to, make, to well, your point, you might. Uh, I was just make, making sure that in 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 our discussion there, we didn't just focus on one. Key well, skill. Well, maybe that it's a minus one and everything else is a minus two. I was going to offer up. <laughs> well, that's not going to differentiate. Uh, that maybe we need to uh, amend the description to really focus on the operational skills if that's what we're worried about. Because I think if you generically say critical skills, uh, I know what comes to my mind is more engineering skills, yeah. uh, technical skills that you need. Um, um, be, development. Yeah, for development. Or yeah, because, I mean, because if you, industries if, if have you actually look, gone away. If you look at the criteria that we elaborated that go with this, it reads potential to sustain key industrial workforce, which could be interpreted in many ways, the potential to engage the appropriate scientific and engineering resources of the nation, and the potential for a sustainable workforce and the maintenance of high quality stable employment in the technical workforce. So it's, it, it's as you said, it's a little more broad. Not to make a complex I'm, problem more complex, but... We, we also have on the scoring sheet this thing about attracting and retaining a highly capable technical workforce. And, you know, how do you, how do you cope with the fact that there's a duality that if we turn off old things so that we can do new things, the graduating engineers are going to go, great, I get to go in and work on a program that does all kinds of new things, which is a good thing. Um, but it goes along with the fact that there's some old things that you're not going to do anymore it's a negative. Mm -hmm. I, 
I'm, I guess I'm questioning Norm's statement before he gets out of earshot here that you just take the minimum of all possible scoring criteria and say whatever is the worst thing is what you mm -hmm. score. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I haven't heard a better suggestion than the one we had before I raised the objection. So l let You're me tell you. Retract your objection. I'll, I'll retract my <laughs> objection. <laughs> uh, all in favor. Like and and uh, since I made it, I can retract it. So let me tell you what I think we scored there, which is on item two, uh, option two, it was a minus one. Mm -hmm. On option four, it was a minus one. Option, option four? What? I'm sorry. <laughs> four, <laughs> I'm starting to get. 3B. Option 3B, which is on line four, it's, it's a minus one. Option 3B, dollar sign is a minus one. Option five, dollar sign is a zero. Option six, dollar sign is a minus one. Seven dollar sign is a minus one, and seven S dollar sign is a minus one. Now, we agreed that we would use uh, a rule on the workforce just like we use the rule on science, which is basically to scale it off the total expenditure of the principle that the way to make jobs is to spend money. And you can't make jobs well. There's an efficiency argument. Um, now, the, the, let's talk for a minute about the last two, which we left blank, and just make sure that we're comfortable with taking the the outcomes of the um, aerospace analysis and using it to inform these. Um, Sally, you wanna? You're the one who knows that the best. You wanna comment um. on that? <clears throat> In other words, is, 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 it, it would go to the fact of, let's take schedule for a minute. Is this schedule performance or is this, in, you know, is this sort of confidence in the schedule and risk? You know, it's, uh, it's the way that the scenarios will come out is uh, they'll spit out a budget um, that the um, the methodology believes will give you 65% confidence of making that. Right. So, that, so it will not discriminate between between these two. Um, you agree with that, yes, Wanda? I do. Absolutely. Um, and similarly, so so I would say that it's not going to be a, it's not going to be a, a way to discriminate. Um, Right. In other words, they're, they're, the schedule dates will be at a consistent level of yes. predictable risk. Yeah, but the schedule that we had in the rubrics here right. was when do you get human owner return? When do you get beyond the Yes, data? that's right. Exactly. So, it's, so it's the absolute right. answers. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah. once you have that data, then you can say, hey, this right. comes too late, therefore. Yeah, let's, let's go back and look at that. Everything's going to get a negative one or two. Yeah. <laughs> And, and those right. will. Right. Actually, right. right. So, so the schedule rubrics are associated with the dates of key events right. at the 65% confidence level, right. which is what the analysis will produce. Yeah. Yeah, and the life cycle cost should, is relative <clears throat> to the budget. It should be a little more than that, it seems like. I think what these ladies are saying is exactly right. You know, this is, uh, here is a schedule with a 65% mm -hmm. probability, uh, and that's great. I think more important for us is to judge on the basis, do you get Aries 1 by the time RSS, the ISS is still in orbit, or does it come after it went into the drink? That to me, that aspect is more important in judging uh, these uh, scenarios. Mm -hmm. Do we, you know, we eliminated the scenario linking up happened. things that are built for a function and the function is gone, mm -hmm. you know? And I don't know if we have cases. We had cases today in Sally's presentation. We did. I think those are gone, though. I they're think. all gone. The I ones know. that didn't make sense. Yeah, they didn't make sense, and so they just they just didn't hold together as well. Okay, often, so, so we don't have to worry about so that. So I don't think yeah. we have any. Um, to the best of our ability, we don't, <laughs> we don't have any of those left. That don't right. look like they make sense. Yeah. Okay. It's a little hard to good. tell from this sheet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, right now, nothing's making a lot of sense. But. We're uh, deliberating at a public meeting, so. This is a um, good discussion. It's all good. Um, so it seems to me that, as Wanda points out, if you actually look at the rubrics on charts um, 12 and 13, 
that this is information that you could pretty readily read off the, the, the aerospace analysis. Yep. So it, it's fair to leave those to being based on rule. I think so. Good. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, um, I think we're done. I thought you were playing bingo out there. <laughs> B1. Uh, we have, uh, let me just summarize without actually reading any in specific numbers. We have agreed to ratings under exploration, preparation, technology innovation, human civilization, economic expansion, public, public engagement and inspiration, global partnerships, uh, programmatic sustainability, the, the slightly redefined uh, safety challenge, and national skills. And we have agreed to basically use a, uh, a schedule or budget-driven set of rules for science knowledge, uh, workforce, uh, schedule, and life cycle costs, which will be driven by the output of the, the independent costing analysis. I think that's well done. And I have one other thing that I hesitate to raise, but uh, just as we had a case 10 that we said we would uh, discuss, I think there's a case zero that we've got to put on here, which basically is the program of record. In other words, it, it's hard to ignore the program that exists, but then we will, in all the boxes where you would score it, we would put uh, not executable. We'll just put the word not executable or something, because I don't think we can ignore the program that, that's the program that's funded today that people are working to. Right. Our and notes said that was gonna. That's right, that, 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 there is actually two reference cases that we'll have. Yeah. The program of record uh, unconstrained and the program of record with the plus up budget level, which very closely re recovers the. No, uh, I, I'm <laughs> talking about a program record not adjusted for risk, not, uh, it's just the way that it is today with uh, you, you've, you oh. allegedly end the shuttle in uh, 2010, uh, 2010 uh, the 2015 ISS. Uh, no money yes. to splash the space station uh, and so on. That, that right. and it has today's budget. Right. We ought to show that here somewhere. Yes, that's right. And then we'll yeah. just put it executable. And, and, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and in fact, you'll remember that, heaven forbid, the longer version of this list <laughs> actually had three cases that we had agreed at our meeting last week that we were going to show for reference. Exactly. Which were the program, which was exactly the program of record. Uh, and two variants. I think the program which had originally been de designed in 2007 time period, the sort of post ESAS record, and, and there was another one I can't remember, but, but it, it would certainly be there. Okay. I think we're uh, getting near the end here. Is anybody? I, I, before we leave this, I, I think we just want to, in the, in the public meeting, reiterate that in, if in the course of the deliberations and additional information that comes to us in the next days or as we're writing our report, you know, there's information that would cause us to change this slightly, I think the committee should reserve the right to do that. You know, as, I think if there's new reflected. factual information, we obviously would reflect that. If there's just a, a new... Right. New but I, I, I think that in, in this won't. public meeting, the the... the the logic and thought process that we used to arrive at this was sufficiently explained that if new information comes along, we, we, should, reflect it. we should reflect it. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd also like to uh, just, uh, uh, just get on the record in the public meeting that I think that what we would like to do in uh, running the, the budget um, scenarios further is uh, use our judgment based on the data that comes out of these to determine which ones we need to run again to get more fidelity uh, when we've learned the most that we think we can reasonably learn with a particular <coughs> scenario, um, you know, so that we've uh, uh, got some uh, closure on this. Yeah, well, that sounds very good. And uh, 
What I would su suggest, we're supposed to meet tomorrow at 8. I would suggest we slip that to 9 to give us time to do our homework tonight so we'd be ready to go to work. We're losing Ed now. So that, uh, <laughs> our, our homework? <laughs> yeah, our homework. Do Dr. Wright and I have agreed there is no homework tonight. No, <laughs> pr Professor, there is homework. <laughs> uh, so we can do our homework this evening, and uh, uh, we'll start at 9 tomorrow. Would you mind alerting by uh, email or uh, Blackberry or whatever those who are not here? We'll plan to start at 9 if that's all right, unless somebody wants to start earlier. And just for clarification, that's not a tomorrow at nine is not a committee meeting. We're just getting ready, getting together to write the final report and to clean up our various activities. There will be no deliberations, and it's not going to be in a public forum. Good point. Glad you said that. Well, to all of you who uh, stuck with us all this time, uh, congratulations. <laughs> you deserve some kind of an award. Uh, thank you. To the <laughs> to be some of the most boring stuff you'll ever hear <laughs> in a public meeting. <laughs> Apparently we're on. Are we adjourned? We're adjourned, sir.